Oh my god. These cameras are unadjusted. The bloom, it's blinding me. It's so much bloom. Alright, uh, go. That's one. Man, I look like a mess today. Alright, uh, this one? Even though we're not using it? Good enough? Why is it? Oh yeah, it's focused close because it's burning the subs. Uh, this one? And then... This one. And back to this one. Check frame rate. Good frame rate. Alright, cool. We're all set. How we doing today? How we doing? That charger for my phone can barely keep the phone charged. It started at 100% and then at the end of stream it was at 95% battery. So it just kind of like stems the tide. <clears throat> I have been 3D printing all weekend. I have done nothing but teleport bread all fucking weekend. Ugh. Brava's got a stream deck. It's pretty cool. I, don't, I can't, I literally cannot afford it. I literally, I can't afford it right now, right? Trade Splatter, hey! <coughs> -la 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 -la. This is some meme that I don't know about. <laughs> is this some kind of a poor person meme that I'm too uh, rich to, to realize? No, uh, <laughs> thank you, Trade Splatter, for the 18 months. I'm going to cough in celebration. All right, that's a little better. Yeah, I gotta clean off the desk a little bit. Um, Here's a work already is on Windows 11. Uh, I heard something about Windows 11 today, yesterday. Gunther? No, I have not. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. I'm not sure. It doesn't come to mind, though, when you mention it. Um, I heard Windows 11 is adding ads to, like, every, like, I don't know, something. Anonymous Cheer, thank you for the 300 bitums. That's three dollars in my pocket. Well, after after Twitch gets their their filthy fingers on it, um, yeah. I mean, we we built the shifter. It's okay. That's actually pretty good, to be honest. Um, but the mechanics of it are weird. So, I have been 3D printing the other version of the shifter, an H pattern shifter for for the Open Sim project. So, working on that. Yeah, Windows 11 is putting more ads into the operating system, which is disconcerting. Possibly fueling a switch to Linus. Unless there's going to be a pro version that gets rid of all that bullshit. But I haven't really gone to Windows 11. None of my hardware supports it because I don't have PPM modules. All my stuff is so old. Functional, but old. I don't got no motherboards that support that kind of thing. Yeah, you can work around it, but who cares? <laughs> right? Right? Who gives a shit? Like, I, I don't, I don't want Windows 11. Why do you want Windows 11? What kind of perverted shit are you doing with your computer? You pervert. <laughs> uh, maybe if it makes my VR more reliable. My, my, my VR system, right? The, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's all go to Linux, man. If Fusion 360 was on Linux, I would be really debating whether or not I wanted to continue on with Windows, you know? Just just one program. That's all it's going to take. One program. Um, so yeah, anyway. Uh, the, you can, I mean, like, oh boy. I don't know. If Fusion 360 would go Linux, I would be super happy, but... Here we are, you know? <laughs> and I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard for them to, to, go, to move over. I don't see much more incentives to keep Windows at this point, right? Like one thing after another, they just keep getting shittier with these, like advertisements just getting more and more aggressive with that shit. Why? They look at these numbers and they're going up and they go, hmm, psychologically, how much, how much are users willing to willing to handle instead of instead of see it's that logic that prevails instead of how can we make the user experience better right <laughs> like, that should be the primary motive of an operating system designer as opposed to how do we make number go up 
It's sick, it's disgusting, it kills me. Yeah. Yeah, where's my control? I'm the user. I click the buttons. <laughs> How we doing today? I got roped into a uh, question about radio stuff on uh, the Discord. I don't know. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge of radio, and it's uh, like it's the most the most common question that I get on this stream is how do I start blank? Right? People go, look at this guy. He knows everything about blank. How do I start blank? And I'm like, don't worry about blank. You let me worry about blank. No, it's like. How do I start learning about X? And like, I love it, I love it. I love the user engagement. I love people learning new things. I love trying to get into cool new stuff. I don't know where to start because I started when I was 14. Yeah, Windows 98, Windows 98 SE, Windows 98 in general was amazing because you could all control delete and you could end all, all of the processes except for Windows 98. The only thing that was running was your operating system. And it wasn't phoning home. It wasn't doing any weird shit in the background. It wasn't trying to get to some ad server. It wasn't trying to download stuff in the background. It was just running the operating system. And that was it. Windows 98 was the only, .exe was the only thing running. And then you start up MechWarrior and everything works perfectly because it was just purely the software that you told it to run running. <sighs> There's a, um, Crap, what was that called? Uh, there, there's a version of Windows 10 that's like the un unintrusive Windows 10. I was thinking of installing it. He's the place I worked at. Installed pirated Windows 98. Yeah, FCKGW. No, that was Windows XP. The fuck George W uh, key that some people have memorized. I mostly, like I, I had it memorized, but now I just know, I know the first couple digits. Imagine not running FreeDOS. Yeah. So flip floppy about Linux. It's like, yeah, it's so much better than Windows. Yeah. Which is true until you have to use it. Yeah. And I tried Majaro. That was weird. Deep in and I couldn't get OBS installed. Couldn't get Flatpak to work. And then all my Windows lost their title bar. Oh, God. Yeah. So like, man. No, it's FCKGW, not BW. G near the B key? No, it's nowhere near the B key. That wasn't a typo. No, wait, yeah, it is. It's right above it. <laughs> that was a typo. Let's <laughs> just check it over. Uh, yeah. Weird, right? I don't know. Windows 11 getting more ad in invasive. I mean, that whole, like, super cheap software on eBay thing, that, that little loophole, I feel like that's part of the big move to, uh, the big push to Windows 11, right? They're just gonna start working on Windows 11 and going, ah, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's great. You should use this one now. And you use it and they're like, ha ha, now you have to pay full price. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, man. Um, Cause I got like a perfect, I got like Windows 10, what is it like professional or something like that? And it was way less intrusive. It didn't have all the bullshit involved. Selling GIMP on Amazon, what the fuck? Yeah, the only thing that I'm gonna miss about this shifter in particular, aside from its redundant springs, which is weird, um, aside from the redundant springs is that reverse, the kick out for reverse and the kick out for whatever the hell this thing is supposed to be, the, the, the seventh gear, um, those kick outs I'm gonna miss. I can implement them in the new one, but the new one has, it's basically this with the, with the pike right here, so. Five bucks and it came on a DVD. No, the way those shady software suites work now is um, they give you access to an FTP server in China. Uh, that's how I bought all of the software and manuals and the parts catalog for my car. My ancient 1999 528XI. The, I mean, you know, it's not like, I mean, yeah, I can go to the mechanic and, and they kind of support it. But, or, or I could go on eBay and I could buy a little serial adapter and then a pin adapter and then get this big software suite and install it all in a shitty little netbook. 
with Windows 10. But yeah, and then I can use the laptop in order to diagnose what's wrong with my car. Now, all of that means that I actually have to do the work to install the software, which I haven't done yet. Everything else is so easy. I spent $14 and I downloaded like five gigs from like somewhere in mainland China, probably Shenzhen. But it means that I can do full diagnostics of my car. All this, all this, all this, uh, all this crap that people, all this, all this uh, fear that's peddled around the electronic car age, and you're not able to do anything. Hey, you can get around a lot of that stuff. Let's go. Hate so much that cars are computers now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what era. I, I, look, I'm never gonna buy a new car. I'm never gonna walk up to a dealership and, and buy a car that way. Although, with the advent of electric cars, if I one day, and that, that day is going to come, when I have to go buy an electric car because they're more supported than, than gas cars, maybe that day won't come until I'm old and gray. But uh, at a certain point, it's going to be like, well, I could get one used, but it's the same thing, just with a more worn battery. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be like cell phones or whatever. <laughs> It's like buying a used cell phone. You get everybody's uh, germs and cells in there. <laughs> anyway, how's it going, everybody? What am I doing? Stop doing that. Paid for a free game once, just because the download would have taken forever on dial-up. Yeah, I don't. They're not. They don't like shipping stuff these days. I got a lot of interesting stuff in the mail, by the way. Got a lot of interesting stuff. We got a 3D print to build. But moreover, I think I don't know if I can save it till Friday because it's gonna get here. Well, the hardware is gonna get here Thursday night because uh, a friend is sending it over. I've got I've got weird friends, right? You know, just like just like in the Discord, uh, the the one person asking questions about radio was very reluctant to admit that they were a prepper, and I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> like we get these general like I don't really want to be specific about what I'm talking about, but. Do you know anything about resistors? And you're like, I know a lot about resistors. Like, what What do you mean? And they're like, I, I have a project that involves resistors, if you know what I mean. And I'm like, I don't know what you mean. There, resistors are every like everywhere. What do you What do you need? The physics of resistors? I need to put a resistor in something. What are you What are you talking about? And they're like, people are very weird about the details. And they're like, I'm gonna start a business about resistors and I'm like there are a lot of resistor businesses why didn't you say that in the first place like because <laughs> people people will be very closed off about the details because they want like like rights and propriety around what they're talking about but they're not smart enough to know that they're asking for very basic stuff that's like been covered tenfold um we get that a lot here usually it's around starting a business so this person was was a prepper I know a lot of preppers Hey, thank you for the sub, NPS. Wow, those are colliding, aren't they? Hmm. I keep saying I need to fix that. That's 32 months. Thank you, NPS. But yeah, people people like, uh, they'll, they'll keep the details close to the chest. Like, I understand that, but at the same time, we need specific information to work off of as engineers. Um, and so if you're asking how to get into something or how to learn about something, the more weird and general you are, the less specific we can be. So I have to point you at a physics textbook instead of a, like a like a systems engineering test textbook. Oh man, it's frustrating. But anyway, um, yeah. So prepper stuff. I got a buddy who's like, I, I live in Pennsylvania, right? I, I know these people. These, these people who 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 make sure that they have tactical equipment and stuff like that. They also hunt. So, um, but I got some cool stuff coming from them. Some really expensive stuff, uh, night vision stuff that I want to build. So I need to cover some serial numbers and then uh, we can put some stuff together. Uh, maybe this week, probably Friday. That might be the Friday project. I'm also 3D printing a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of stuff um, for that shifter project. So we could probably get to that shifter project and do it a little better. Why am I shiny? Am I always shiny? I look shiny today. Why am I? Why am I shiny? <laughs> Weird. Anyway, nah, it's not no Russia Cold War era. No, that was a thing that I had. That uh, it was uh, not Cold War. It was actually end of World War II era, which actually had a radioactive isotope in it. Yeah, Greece. Yeah, crew got a tomato sub, huh? And he's posting the grease all over the place. 
Why, why am I shiny though? Like, what is this? I take a shower every morning. I know, maybe I need, maybe I need theater powder. I should powder myself. I mean, streaming is going on, going on camera, but. No, like, Palooza, we've looked it up in the past and I've told the story. Maybe you're referencing that, uh, but, but I'm, I'm always ready to tell the story again. Um, I had, like, either, I, 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 no, it was definitely World War II era naval night vision, like a, like a night vision thing. And what you would do is you'd hit a button, you'd put this thing on its side and you'd hit a button and this little thing would click down into, into position because it was one of these like a, what is it, Archimedes telescopes? I forget. Uh, it's one of these telescopes where there's the, the reflective dish and a little hole in it and you're viewing from behind that hole. So you're viewing, it was a mm, reflective dish, then there's a little, a little thing, there's a hole and you're viewing from behind that hole like a way to make a very compact lens. A lot of telescopes use these. So what happens is light comes in and it's it's reflected upside down onto this little disc. And that little disc had something that was that was able to be excited by very few photons and it would it would enhance the photons, like an infrared viewer. Um, but in order to charge that material, you had to expose it to a radioactive element. So you would turn this thing on its side, click a button, and a little thing would swing out in front of that and it would charge that that material, right? And so I took that apart. I took that apart on like, in, like a long time ago. It was like the, the early 2000s, I took that thing apart. And uh, I had the parts sitting in a drawer. So part of the parts that were sitting in a drawer contained a radioactive isotope. So I don't know, I don't know, maybe my thyroid problems are because <laughs> I got fucking radioactive exposure. It, I don't think it was very radioactive, but that thing ended up in the garbage. So uh, I don't know. I think it's okay, but but I don't know how much I exposed myself to, to uh, radiation. Yeah, a reflector telescope, what do they call it? Is it a decent nod that you're getting? Cheap stuff is not that impressive. Um, I'm not getting it, right? I am putting it together for a friend. And the reason that they wanted me to put it together instead of just putting it together themselves is because it would be fun to see on stream. It's like a relatively new enclosure for some uh, night vision equipment that they have. So don't eat the telescope candy rocks. I know, right? So yeah, anyway, it's, it's, it's not mine somebody else's and I have to cover the serial numbers because they're also a crazy prepper person and they don't want <laughs> they don't want any traceability on what I'm doing so that's the story uh it's expensive stuff though I think it's generation three night vision stuff gen three involves a lot of um uh dimming and stuff like that gen two you can get blinded by looking at stuff that's bright and you can ruin the night vision by looking at like daylight this is gen 3 so it's way less sensitive to that stuff and it auto dims and stuff it's gonna be i can't really show the night vision on 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 camera though because it, it the, the auto dimming of the camera is going to completely defeat any darkness that i'm able to achieve here but yeah they wanted me to put that together they, they said it would be cool if i put it together so <laughs> On, on the stream. It, uh, oh, it'd be a great stream project. You can put this together for me. I'm gonna have to be careful about all the optics, but. Yeah, but the night vision that I have is that giant uh, optic that we haven't done anything with. And then um, that was from a research thing. And then I've got, uh, I had <laughs> that naval, not naval, it was, I think it was part of that big sniper scope thing I stole the box for, but it was radioactive. <laughs> anyway, Metronomic Live, check him out if you get a chance. He hasn't streamed lately, but he'll be back, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. What was the latest VOD? A month ago. Today, today is kind of like a question mark day. Uh, beginning of the week, I am in bad. I didn't sleep <laughs> again. I suck at sleep. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I'll fix myself. I'll fix myself this week. 
because we've got a lot of interesting stuff in the pipe to do. Um, and then I, I want to stress test this laser, and then when it when it pukes liquid all over the place, I'll caulk it up again and then uh, and leave it for another day or two. I suck at sleep, but I've been getting better at napping. I can't I can't do that. I can't nap. I just don't I don't I don't do naps. But when when the laser fails, we'll take a look at um, something cool that I spent a little bit too much money on, which is the um, it's the wireless module for the wheel. Uh, if I can get that wireless module working, we can maybe reverse engineer the protocol. I hope it's not too complicated. Probably isn't. There's probably a lot of stuff to that that uh, protocol that I need to get into in order to like do a decent job at reverse engineering it. Like for instance, tell it that there's a battery level and some other stuff. I'm hoping it's one packet, but it might be several and it might be a whole a whole modem kind of thing, which is oh, it's so complicated to do. But we'll get into it. I mean, if, if the laser if the laser fails and leaks, then we will um, we'll be doing that. Otherwise, uh, I want to stress test the laser. Depends on the isotope. I have some trinonite in the house. It's mostly an alpha emitter. Yeah, no, this isn't. This is like not good stuff. Um, what what is that optic? The radioactive night vision that comes up with lyrics. Is that a photonix? No. Imagine tra radioactive night visions. Imagine dragons. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's gonna completely fuck up the Google results. No, it's not tritium. Minus imagine. Glow for it. Uh. Like in this mix, this is an old one though. Still cool. I for, I've got it in my favorites. Hold on. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's not so much that, it's it's more the, the algorithm is starting, to, it's just not amazing anymore. They changed the way search works and... Was it about favorites or something? No, hold on. Do, do, do. Bookmarks, there we go. Bookmarks, oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I cleaned these out a little while ago, but quadrative signal. Piece of flat wire, the antenna basics, DIY clover leaf. There's just R. <laughs> some of these are, some of these are mistakes. Oh uh, yeah, think about how to convert a gas grill into a slow cooker. Oh here it is. It's my latest bookmark. Oh wait, no, it's not. Hold on. No, that's not the right one. God, I'm looking at bookmarks like I'm like I'm 60 years old. Usually I just remember stuff, but this is that night vision website that I found that was really informative. How to buy? What? <laughs> what? What is that one? All right, hold on. I'm still looking. Yeah, the wheel adapters for my old car wheels. Oh yeah, the the spreadsheet of YouTube demonetization words. I remember that. Now I don't I don't know if I can find it. There was an old night vision website. That, uh, that had some really good information on it. High-end bullshit generator for audiophile magazine writers. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't remember bookmarking that. It's great. 
ZFS, it's all bullshit. What in the hell? Mm. Well, I know it's on here, I just don't know. Mirror lenses? No, that was for a different project. Why is there just a picture of an eagle? <laughs> why is there just a why is there just a picture of an eagle? Oh, because it's taken yeah, this is this is the type. Schmidt Cassegrin, that's right. So you're looking at you're looking at like an objective through the lens. But yeah, that part was was charged by a radioactive isotope. Why did I why did I bookmark that? <laughs> why did I bookmark that? Hold on. Still looking. And a theory website. 11 mistakes every home brewer makes. Okay. Page unavailable. Roll gray ice cream. Shit, that sounds good. Uh, meal planner. R. It's literally the letter R. Blah, 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 blah. I wonder, I wonder if we need to use Wireshark to, to reverse engineer this thing. I don't know if Wireshark is going to do a good job, but it would be nice to have something that could, uh, that could, like, organize the packets as they come in. I don't know if there's anything like that for Arduino. There probably is a project that I could find that'll help with that. I do not know where this web page is, and I wish I could show it. I wish I could show you guys this this uh, website that had a bunch of details about night vision devices, because then I could prove to you that I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about a device that's relatively rare that people don't really talk about. Is it this one? No. Ah, I can't find it. Anyway, it was a it was a very basic old website that had uh, had a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, but part of it was that uh, it had a little slide out optic, a little fallout optic that would radioactively charge. And I don't remember what the isotope was in there, but like it it went into detail about how you should be careful around this device because uh, if you disassemble it, all of the that radiation gets out, and you can get exposed. You know, <laughs> so you know, I don't know which one it was. Have you tested the cooler since last week? No, I have not. Um, I, I printed two of them and then I cocked it and I've let it set for once. Um, the scheduling for streaming because it's day after day after day, like immediately, uh, I, I believe that the uh, cock did not get an opportunity to set. It didn't actually like dry. Um, so that's that's what we're testing today uh, to see if it works. And I, I have no doubt in my mind that it will work. No doubt in my mind. 100% this will work. Ugh. Yeah, it just took some time. It had to get comfortable. You let me worry about those jokes. <laughs> I am I am so tired right now. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna maybe get an early bed tonight. <sighs> I'm gonna clean my glasses. I look a little bloated, don't I? I'm gonna get it colder in here, that'll help. What up, what up, what up? Took a four hour nap yesterday? Oh shit. I should do that. I should do, I can't do naps. I just can't. What up, Jeebus? Yeah, I can't do naps. I, I just don't, I don't do well with naps. I don't know. I can do naps. I'm lying to myself. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm just telling, telling little lies to myself. I can't do naps because I always have to be occupied. <laughs> Feels like quitting. Get it colder in here, then I'll be a little less puffy. 
the problem is it's not cold out. It's actually warm out. That's a problem. Stop being summer. What temperature? 63 degrees? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to die today. I'm going to move the fan closer so I don't literally fucking die. <laughs> That's why I'm shiny, because I'm sweating. Got all the lights over here. Wearing winter clothes. You guys can tell I'm not in a bikini. <laughs> hey, Uncle Phil. Run from a four hour nap is sleep. All right. Take a siesta. I feel like I'll be up late if I do that, though. All right. Yeah, anyway, I was I was getting everybody caught up with stuff. What do we got? Oh, yeah, we had a bunch of anonymous gifts at last stream. All right, I'm back. I, You know, I meant to do Saturday, but it snowed. And now it's 63 degrees out. What is that? <laughs> That's 336 degrees Kelvin. Can you believe that? Seventeen degrees Celsius. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> I, yeah, that's it. I, if I take if I take a nap, I am liable. I mean, God, I need to sleep. My body needs to sleep. I should probably look into getting a, uh, a CPAP again. I don't know. I need to lose weight so that I can sleep properly, and then my sleep is actual sleep. You know. Peltier cooling is amazingly inefficient and it's not worth it. Don't even look into it. Save yourself the time. It is a it is a engineering 101 project. If you are just getting into engineering and you want to do a project for school, you can take a look at Peltier's, but it's going to require a lot of energy. The amount of energy that Peltier's take is unreasonably excessive. So if you're willing to dump a bunch of energy into a problem, all right, use a Peltier. If like engineers do not use Peltiers unless they are backed into a corner under knife point, like it, it you just don't use them. Like they're so terrible. <laughs> they're fun to play with. You can play with one. You can go, ooh, it's cold on this side and hot on this side. Neat. Um, aside from that, uh, you will learn if you get into them that they are excessively over the top. They are excessively excessive. They're, they're not worth it. Anyway, yeah. Radio thermal electric generator? What the hell is that? Weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the numbers. I don't know the numbers. I don't remember. Um, I know that it's like as my own. I, d I did a little project with it. A friend of mine did a little project with them. It's just, I mean, it's crazy. You don't, you don't need a nuclear battery. You can you get a 15 amp or a 15 volt, 10 amp power supply and you hook it up to your, no, yeah, 15 volt, like like 20 amps. You'll hook it up to a little plate of a Peltier and go, ooh, that's cold. And then you touch the other side and you go, ow, I burnt my finger. Like, <laughs> Intel Cryo Cooler for 10th gen, huh? I know, I know um, EKWB has a unit that they have uh, that does Peltier cooling for a processor. The processor requires a lot of Peltier cooling in order to get all that heat away. Um, but they also had to couple it with a, a, an atmospheric sensor so that it, could, that, that it could calculate the dew point and adjust so that uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't cause uh, condensation and kill everything. Peltier's work for astrophotography camera sensors. Yeah, because you gotta put you gotta put stuff like deep into an electronics project, like a like a bunch of stuff around it, like optics all around it and stuff, right? Peltiers are probably I don't think I don't know if they're used in because you need cryo cooling for some thermal imagers. That's why that's why the javelins, the javelin unit, like the unit that they take from javelin to javelin, um, that's why that has a uh, like a like a startup time. It, it takes like I don't think it's like 10 minutes, but it's like it's like 10 to 30 seconds or something for it to spool up and start functioning. And that's because the non-cooling thermal sensors weren't around in the 80s. I don't know if there have been electronics updates to the Javelin. I'm not 
I don't remember, but um, it takes a little bit for it to spool up and start working because they are getting the thermal sensor to cryo temperatures or something like that. Yeah, javelin like for the missile. It's got it's got uh, thermal optics in it. It's it's a, it's got night vision, at thermal, and regular visual optics all in that unit. So that unit's actually been used as a like a like a scouting thing. Uh, apart from the missile, it's actually very useful after you've expended the javelin missile. You still got that unit that has all those wonderful optics in it. It's got like a four to six x zoom or something like that. Pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. They, oh, it was Intel and EKWB that did that. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the I mean, in in terms of like, if you're if you want to do crazy cooling phase change you just have to learn how to bend pipes <laughs> you gotta learn how to take copper pipes to whatever annealing temperature bend them cleanly and then do a little bit of a, a little bit of a pressure hookup and then you've got a, a with a compressor those miniature compressors they were like six hundred dollars when i used to when i was looking into that now you get a miniature compressor for like 80 bucks it's a miniature compressor it's so cool i want to build a computer around something like that but i don't i don't know it's a lot of trouble these days to get the computer part of the cool computer build. <laughs> so extra liquid nitrogen used in an old thermal camera. Yeah, the old ones required liquid nitrogen, I guess. That's crazy. I don't know if they're using phase change or LTAs or what. I've never, I you know, thermal optics are, are crazy expensive, so I haven't been able to look into any of it. Yeah, it's basically what you're doing is you're building an air conditioner. That's that's the more efficient way. It's phase changing uh, refrigerant. Oh, I see. The sensors are passive. It's not all the same as trying to cool a 100 watt processor or anything else using much power. So they have to get it down to temperature and that it does that easily. And then they just keep it there. Yeah, I remember the phase change cases from the 2010s. That's, I would no, I'd rather do it myself though. I want to, I want to make my own refrigerator. <laughs> I don't know what that would involve. You need to put like a, like a. Basically, what you're doing is, yeah, that's what. Uh, uh, ba 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 ba. Uh, why not? Because it's talking about that. Um. But yeah, with uh. Yeah, you can use sand. There's a, there's a bunch of different uh, techniques. Um, but yeah, with refrigeration, what you need to do is you're basically, um, you need to put a restriction in the line. You need to put a heat sink in the line. And then you have your thing that's, that's causing the refrigerant to boil off. And you're just trying to play with the phases of the refrigerant that's, that's working. And you need like a high and a low pressure side and you need to put enough coolant in there for it to work properly. It's not all that complicated, but it is a little complicated. It's hard to build. You know, you can't, they don't have exactly like flexible, uh, quick quick disconnect piping systems for that stuff. <laughs> oh, below zero C, so the CCD doesn't register a lot of noise. I didn't know they got cleaner with, with cooling. I just thought that was a thermal thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I thought, I thought uh, you know, I never looked into it very hard, but I thought thermal camera, they, they want a nice baseline so they, they can see everything. I mean, the, the <laughs> military optics, I guess thermals are still gonna be useful because they're looking at something that's blatantly there. But I mean, in terms of like night vision, where that's going in the future, I don't think they're gonna have these, these uh, vacuum tube image intensifiers anymore. Uh, Cause there, I, I've seen some stuff where they have just like a regular camera, but the CCD sensor is so sensitive that it just looks like daytime. Just the, the whatever tiny little photons are there in general are enough to make full, full blown color images looking like the, you know, midday in the desert. And then they flip to the regular camera and it's just darkness. It's pretty intense, it's crazy. Guys, YouTube is pro HVAC and he gets all, goes all over these different commercial installations. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, uh, you know. As an engineer, I love refrigeration. Refrigeration systems. <laughs> Check this out. Look at this color scheme. Preview of things to come. You guys will view it behind text. Now, here. 
I have been 3D printing for three days. Uh, I, James Webb isn't really gonna have pictures, is it? It's, I mean, yeah, but they're gonna be in, uh, in weird frequencies and stuff. As a fat man, I too like refrigeration system. Yeah, I suppose that's, <laughs> I guess I'm double dipping. I'm an engineer and a fat guy. Uh, I love air conditioning. I'll never stop. So yeah, this is uh this is gonna be the shifter. Yeah, I saw Red Letter Media. They Josh brought up Shake Hands with Danger. I want him to watch the the real one though, the original. But uh, <laughs> man, I, I really want him to watch that because that's a great video. But yeah, they watched a similar safety video that was uh in fact all accidents. <laughs> Oops, all marshmallows. Oops, all accidents. <laughs> we forgot to put the narrative in the video. Not just thermal, a warm sensor generates noise, even in visible light. We notice in ordinary photos, but also nerds working down at minimum levels of detectability and signal to noise ratios are low anyway. Well, I, I, so the, the CCD overheating was the reason that my original desk camera had to turn itself off and on. It was actually you know, like a DSLR from 2000 and what, like six, no, it was 2000 and where was I living at the time? I was in Arlington. No, I was in Falls Church, which puts it at, I don't remember the year, 2010-ish. I don't know. It was an old DSLR and uh, I had it on a big tripod to look at the desk so that I could do the hand camera like I'm doing with you guys right now with a webcam. But the sensor was a, an old generation and so every Every two minutes, it had to turn off for 30 seconds and then turn back on. It was unacceptable in a, in a video setup, but I wish I had waited. I wish I had waited to get the, uh, the camera for streaming. Anyway, this is what I'm thinking about with the shift knob. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I, I should use this knob realistically. Yeah, the, uh, Uncle Bill's talking about invisible light sensors, yeah. That's wild. I, I, I guess I kind of knew about that, but didn't really think about that. that. That the big deal, the big boy sensors are using active measures of cooling in order to get them down to temperatures where the noise is not present. I didn't know that was a noise thing. That's cool. So big telescopes have those. Yeah, the, the color scheme is interesting because I, I thought this part was gonna be purple. I thought this part was gonna be purple and I'm still having, I'm still having support material issues. This is an issue. <laughs> I After this print, I set the distance to be a little greater, so now stuff should break away properly, but that layer under the support is still gonna look like absolute garbage. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, seventh to reverse versus, I, I don't, I feel like I need something, but I need to install something. I think I need to mess with the mechanics on this so that like it's hard to get into reverse. On my car, on the actual BMW, double year, uh, you go into reverse, but it stops you, and then you actually have to like ugh, force it over, and it clicks over into reverse. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that in this thing. If it's in a video game, maybe I keep it just for challenge mode, right? Like first gear is here, so I know where to get to first gear, second gear, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. But here would be like secret gear or something. I don't know. Oh, they have a mirror alignment image. Yeah, I was gonna say James Webb isn't, it doesn't exactly, it's not exactly optical. Like it's not the frequencies that we see. So we're not exactly gonna get images back from it, but it is an imager, so we should get image. One of the cool things that James Webb does is actually inject noise into the signal. They cut off certain mirrors in, a, in one of the schemes. They cut off certain mirrors so that uh, when they use the, whatever the algorithm is to put everything together, it actually cleans up the image a little bit more. I've only heard of something like this happening in uh, clocks for distributed systems that are supposed to be on the same timing. This is something that came up when I had the audio engineering job. But one of the things that they did, um, one of the things that they did was do uh, uh, three clocks on the device. And one clock was responsible just for injecting noise into the system that somehow allowed them to synchronize clocks over a very large amount of devices. 
that were all that were all somehow uh, coupled to one another with a with a clock signal, like a synchronization clock signal. Really weird math going on there, and I never understood how it worked. Something similar is occurring in James Webb. That's the alignment image. Oh, well, piss. They got it all wrong. Look at that. None of those dots line up at all. What are they doing? Ah, they fucked it up. They really fucked it up. Those guys don't know what they're doing. I could do it better. As a, as a contractor, I know that those, those stuffy engineers sitting in their desks don't know anything. So I'm going to put a third of the bolts I need into this thing, and then it'll collapse. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I've been hydrating like hell today. Be right back. Bill knows what he's talking about. Part of the hard work in Astro is making reference frames of all sorts. Lights, darks, and more. To characterize the noise and sensitivity of that specific sensor in that specific condition than using the data processing to clean up actual data. Yeah, one of the things that I'm noticing is there's an interference pattern on all of the aligned optics. So that's cool. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, why, <laughs> why do you know so much? Why don't you do that? <laughs> so you guys can tell I'm diabetic. With one, with one simple trick. Doctors hate this. Uh, <laughs> notice how cool, uh, you can't see it anymore. Um, oh, maybe it's because the glass is a little colder. Nah, okay, so I've warmed up. I've started moving around and my blood is pumping to all my extremities. If I went outside in the cold, it's 63 degrees. It's not cold out. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I could actually get cold in this shop, um, you would be able to see that the tips of my fingers are a much different temperature than the rest. I mean, you can kind of see it a little bit there, but blood flow to the extremities is, is something with diabetes. It's something your body does anyway, um, closing off, uh, restricting capillaries and whatnot in, in your extremities when you get cold. Uh, it'll probably happen again when I get cold, but, uh, but at the beginning of the stream, my, my fingertips were blue under thermals. <laughs> But then I started moving around. I started talking to you guys and, and cleaning up, and then I went to the bathroom, and all that all that stuff contributes to blood flow. So, I actually have very good circulation. I, it's not necessarily a diabetic thing um, with me. <laughs> but look at those interference patterns. That's cool. They got all them all them hexes, hexagonal mirrors, all aligned and shit. It's almost like they know what they're doing. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. I don't even know what Raynaud's phenomenon is. What is this? You're getting obscure. Oh, it's a medical. Oh, that's a that's a rare thing though. Uh, that's not something. Yeah, that's where your that's where your extremities look completely pale, <laughs> like like no blood flow at all. I'm a meat camera. Uh, negative. I am a meat camera. <laughs> That's cool. 
So imaging technology is all there. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder what that sensor. That that. Uh, what is that? That's like a. I wonder if this this holds peanuts to any of. Uh, what was that company? Photonics. Quantum efficiency advances. Holy shit. No, I, I'm probably using the wrong search terms, but there's a video of these guys out in the desert. And they've got such a sensitive... Yeah, I look, I read it, but I don't soak it up. <laughs> they have such a sensitive um, Pulsar NV. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, yeah, they're at the top. They, they got all that AdSense. Um, but, yeah, they have such a sensitive CCD. I wonder if, I wonder if that is from astrophysics or if astrophysics can can take some stuff from this one of the crazy things to do if you if you get your hands on a like a night vision like a, a night vision optic night vision optics are pretty cool they got a lot of little little parallel plates in them that bounce photons back and forth across a like an emissive substance that's charged with high voltage so as the photons are bouncing back and forth they're getting enhanced so if you look up at the sky with night vision, it's insane. At night, at night, you shouldn't look at the sun. You should never look at the sun with any uh, imaging optics. <laughs> but if you look at night, if you look up at the sky with night vision, you see a lot more that's there. You get a lot more noise, obviously, but you see a lot more that's up there in the sky. Pretty cool stuff. And that's basically, you know, all that stuff is, is like, astronomers love it. <laughs> sensor and it points at the lens oh no no there's there's the wonderful color scheme light blue on white <laughs> yeah these i think these guys are I think i don't know this is maybe not what we're looking at i don't know the one that i saw it was like uh two guys hanging out in the desert at what looked like high noon and then they're like, here it is with the normal camera. And it was like pitch black. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Anyway. Thud, thud, thud. Away we go. Mm, yeah. I don't know if it, yeah. I don't know when we'll even find out about that stuff. Anyway, Metronomic Live. Uh, you know, you guys check him out. Because I basically steal his streams in order to have some kind of background music at the beginning. Um... And while I did ask him if that was okay, I did it on air. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of scummy of me, I realize. Um, I, I think he is objectively okay with it, though. I just realized that, that I didn't do that the best way. <laughs> anyway, hi. Um, I only look at the sun with a Fresnel lens. Hmm. Fresnel? I, I say Fresnel, but I've only ever heard it. Uh, I've only ever read it. Yeah, image intensifiers, tube tech, over 60, 70 years old. Yep, green monochrome, that's what I'm... Yeah, that's that's basically old school night vision is not... It's not new technology. All the new technologies around those vacuum tube sensors are essentially in ways to preserve the vacuum tube. Um, and then other things like like adding basic line, like edge tracing uh, algorithms to it with a little a little unit that you clip onto the front. That's basically where night vision is gone. Um, and now there's this sort of new class of CCD sensors that are like super duper sensitive that can that can really uh, like enhance stuff very greatly. Uh, cool stuff. And that all applies to astronomy because <laughs> it's the same thing. They're just trying to make the darks into lights. Um, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. It me, streamer. Um, how's everybody doing? So... We are gathered here today in order to work on stuff. <laughs> what have I been doing? Uh, the weekend was hell. It was 3D printer hell. Um, but I, I guess I fully expected to get into 3D printer hell, you know, having improved the printer and done all that stuff. Um, so I've been trying to dig myself out of the hole that I dug with this shifter for the sim setup. This shifter dug us into a hole. It's not bad, but... It's not ideal. <laughs> it kind of it kind of relies on the force of you shifting going into something that's 3D printed. 
which is not a good design. That's not a good design. And I could I could reimagine and reinvent any any piece of that. But there are other things that I'm sort of like not happy with them relying on with 3D printing. These I don't know whoever's designing these things. I, bleh. So um, I looked at the other design. There's there's a bunch of uh, shifters on Thingiverse, but there's actually there's like four. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more than that, but this is the other design, and I have been printing all weekend in order to accomplish some of this stuff. So I did translucent orange, and then I used a different infill pattern to make it look interesting. I wanted in Fusion 360, I wanted to cut out like triangle shapes and stuff into this thing. I wasn't able to do that. Fusion does not let you sketch around an object. And so I tried putting a seam in there and then flattening it out using the sheet metal tool. And so then I was able to actually put a pattern down on a flat surface and extrude that through so that I cut out that pattern. And then it turns out that the sheet metal tool is absolutely nothing to do with the re-rolled thing. What the hell? There's like a whole separate workspace for working with flattened sheet metal, and it doesn't reapply any of the stuff that you do to the original object. And I looked that up online, and they're like, yeah, it just does that. I'm like, why? Why does it? Why? What's going on here? So anyway, um, I just made it the, the, the PVC pipe section of the build solid because i'm not you know I'm not in europe we don't have metric sized pvc pipe plus i don't i don't like pvc pipe now i, I uh, scratch that i i don't mind pvc pipe but i'm not using i'm not using it i don't want to get that dust all over again so i ended up printing and printing and printing and in order to get the print right i used up a lot of filament turns out my printer prints extremely fast now so the filament gets used up and so I had an emergency situation where I had to swap filament and I, I did the Indiana Jones switcheroo with it. Actually, I, I didn't actually do that. What I did is as it started to use up the filament, I took the, um, I built a PVC bong standing in our star once. Yeah, <laughs> we used to, we used to joke about doing the, the pipe bomb challenge in Home Depot. You have to choose an aisle and build a, build a bomb out of it without, ugh, anyway. Uh, that was when Home Depot went 24 hours. <laughs> so anyway, um, as the filament was getting used up, I was looking at it at the corner of my eye and like, oh shit, it's gonna, it's not gonna make it to the end of the print. And so what I, what we, what I ended up doing is taking the the black filament and following the purple down until until the roller caught it. Good reason to not be open late night. I know. Um, so yeah, what I ended up doing is actually creating a pretty freaking cool color scheme with this furthering furthering my need for a dual filament 3d printer because man could you imagine being able to just do this on command how did this work out so well where's the mix there's usually there's usually like a struggle portion where the the two filaments are kind of in in mar martial combat in order to achieve the uh the goal of being the the only filament coming out of this thing i'm not seeing it though I think maybe somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, no, don't don't do that challenge. <laughs> just just don't know. Just nope, nope. Do not. Oh, maybe it's right here. Uh no, I'm not seeing it. I don't know. I don't know how it switched so cleanly. I'm I'm kind of amazed actually. Now you can tell the printer, you can, you can tell Prusa that you want to do a filament change in the middle of a print. Um, and I could have done that for the last layer of this and then it would have cleanly exited the nozzle and come back with, with the different color. But when you, when you part the nozzle from the print, uh, there's often evidence of that going on. And so I, I didn't get that here. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. And I, I should, if I did this intentionally, I would have reversed the colors. But hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> A pretty cool little color scheme going on there. I like that. Oh, I want a dual. No I want two nozzles on my printer, partially for for stuff like this, and also because uh, I know, right? I I had to make this work, even though the the support was too close to the the PETG. It was very difficult to break off, and I did a very poor job of it. Um, this is this is too good not to keep. <laughs> it looks too cool. It's too perfect. Uh, I would love to be able to do fancy stuff like this all the time with a dual filament printer. But anyway, so that's, that's, we're going to do that later. I'm still waiting for parts. Still waiting for parts. Yeah, this is, this is also bad. This seam is very bad. 
But uh, yeah, I've got the base, I got the top, I got the cylinder. There's a bunch of little parts that I have for the thing too. That's where the electronics are supposed to go, which we will make work with the rest of our steering wheel system. And then the gates go up here. And I can alter the gates if I want in order to print a different shift pattern. Although I have to have switches behind all the, all the little gates, but yeah, can't 3D print everything, but. <laughs> well, like a professional part, it looks crap on the back side. There's a little bit on the front side too. That's not looking too great because this is on top of support structure. It's just bad. It's just bad. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm, my printer doesn't do supports very well and you can't have two top surfaces on a 3D printer. DIY laser sintering. That'd be neat, but you also have to have powder. You have to have a lot of powder for sintering. All right, anyway, so that's that's the shifter. I don't know if I want to use the shift knob or not. It depends on how it feels. I also, <laughs> one thing I tried to do was engineer a little cup that goes on the, because I, I, need, I need an adapter here because this is 14 millimeter and this is this post is 10. Um, so I tried to engineer, and, and because it's in black filament, you can't see it at all because the camera hates it. I don't know. Um, I tried to engineer the bottom piece of this and get that right. Because at the top of this this little pylon insert thing, there's a little, there's like a, a peg, right? And that, that sort of centers the uh, the shift knob and keeps it keeps it straight, right? It keeps it from being able to be twisted around. So what I tried to do is make a little cup that would interface this and overlap it a little bit so that there wasn't like a big seam. And, you know, I could play with it from there. So what I assumed, what I assumed was that there was a flat plate. Or sorry, what I assumed is that everything was was arranged properly, right? You've got that peg going across here. And so I thought that directly behind it would be that little expanded portion of the shifter. Because that's what it looks like, right? Well, it turns out whatever whoever put this in or whatever put this in, put it in crooked. <laughs> It doesn't actually align with the weird shape of this thing. There. Eh. Make sure that's locked in. There we go. See, it doesn't twist now. But it doesn't line up. What the hell? It's like off by like two degrees. What is this? <laughs> what is this, a joke? What is this? <laughs> who who built this? What is this? Ugh, this thing was cheap and it's showing. It's cheap and it shows. I still want to have a nice shifter on this thing. So yeah, uh, frustrations of fusion, not being able to put a big pattern of, of open holes in this. Because the stuff inside is, gonna, is it looks very interesting. There's a lot of mechanics inside that look cool. Will look cool when we build it. Uh, uh, you know, that I don't necessarily want to hide away behind this uh, admittedly pretty good looking uh, weirdo reflective-y kind of tube. But anyway, I, I don't want to hide all this stuff in here. I want to I wanna put like weird pylons in the path so the thought is that i either replace this with that uh that steel mesh that i have the speaker mesh or i don't know eventually i can make a cutout pattern but fusion doesn't like to wrap a flat pattern around a cylinder so i don't know how i can sketch and extrude it in there k3d voss talk i haven't heard of that nice one to build specs Every China printer you can sell. Neat. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be going, you know, going dual filament is a, such a commitment. Maybe my dual filament printer can be water cooled. I don't know. Let me put all the 3D print stuff aside. Let's get to the laser. So that's the other thing that I was working on is the laser. All these projects that I've been working on require you to just sit there and wait. <laughs> Everything's like out of my hands now. I've automated myself out of my own workspace such as life oh check this out look what i got in the mail freaking laser beams i know look what i got in the mail you're looking at a hundred dollars 90 something dollars not happy about that but uh what is this what is this so this is our reverse engineering project for later today um what i'd like to do is get this hooked up to probably has to be hooked up to more than the oscilloscope. I'm probably going to have to involve an Arduino in order to do signal interpretation. We'll take a look at the we'll take a look at the signal protocol on the scope and see what we can see. Um really it might be more of like a wire shark kind of thing. I don't have wire shark. I don't know how to use those things. We got to we got to sniff this protocol. We're going to get our nose right up in there, right up in between its cheeks and sniff the protocol out of this thing. 
<laughs> yeah, way to compress $100 into $15 worth of fiberglass and silicon. Yeah, I'm just bitter because Granite Devices doesn't have any published resources for communicating, uh, for how to digitally communicate to their steering wheel controller. I want to do that because I want to unlock the extra buttons. What this is, is a wireless um, steering wheel, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to call it. It's a wireless wheel module, let's just call it that. You hook a battery up to this thing and then you put all the switches of the steering wheel on the same thing, the switches and knobs, and I think it can run a screen. Maybe that's the newer one. Um, but this communicates over low energy Bluetooth to the Granite device's steering wheel and allows you to have all the buttons of the wheel, but not have to have the, the uh, I wanna call it a turnbuckle, but I don't think that's what it's called. It's basically the, uh, the, uh, what's it called in cars? I forget what it's called. Shit. I forgot the term. Um, in, in your car wheel, since your car wheel only has a certain number of, of twists that it can do. No, it's not steering. Vehicle. No, because your, your wheel can only go like one or two turns before you actually run into a physical limiter. Um, what they have in there is what's basically like, uh, sometimes it's called a clock spring but it's, it's a flat cable that's wrapped one way a couple times and then the other way a couple times. And so when you turn your wheel, it's basically laying itself out or, or you know, whatever. It's, it's just moving back and forth, right? So that's how they get all those digital signals into the steering wheel. In this case, what they've done is just use low energy Bluetooth in order to enable you to do that. And that's because with a racing sim setup, you might wanna have multiple wheels. So you could just unplug your wheel from the, from the um, servo and then plug a new wheel in. And I do have two car wheels around here, but I don't need 120 buttons on the steering wheel. I need a couple more buttons so that I can have the shifter work. Because <laughs> this, this requires seven, seven extra buttons and we're running out of space. What we had to do on the actual Granite Devices controller was take the LIN bus and make that control some port expanders that then physically pressed and unpressed not physically, that digitally pressed and unpressed buttons going into the unit. And they, they want you to use like a regular SIM setup, which typically puts those over ethernet plugs. For some reason, SIM users love these ethernet plugs. And so that's, yeah. But you can also buy button panels that have this thing in it too. Mm -mm. No, for, for consumer cars, they just have, the, there's another controller in the wheel itself and that digitally communicates back and forth. That's why we had to reverse engineer the LIN bus, local interconnect network bus, in order to figure out what these, they don't, they don't parallel those signals. So, like older cars, older systems and cars do parallel a lot of that stuff, but, but digital buses are the new rage. Not even the new rage, it's like old as hell. Drop by my dentist's office this afternoon, pick up a PC, I'm re-imaging. Huh. 24 DC, five amp power brick for the digital x-ray film reader died. $375 for a transformer in a plastic case? <laughs> yeah, $20 on Prime. 24 DC, five amp, huh? Yeah, that's a, that, I, that's a little bit more industrial voltage. I guess x-ray, they need, they need a lot of energy. All right, here we are with lasers. We got lasers, I got the safety glasses out. Uh, don't really have a clean desk. I have cocked the hell out of this thing, kind of, um, kind of. I, I don't. I'm a little. I'm a little worried about the quality workmanship at display here. Uh, that looks a little sus. Uh, we got to test it though, and I saved it for you guys. I saved the testing for you guys. Do you regret trying to water cool this yet? I regret rushing. <laughs> I have no regrets in regard to water cooling. Regrets. God, that uh, Kraken played a movie game Monday and it was a uh, Matrix game. It was super duper fun looking. It's such a janky game. Oh, I loved it. Anyway, um, sus, Amogus. There's a couple little sus spots on this, but I feel like this should be successful because everything is covered. The only thing that could really ruin our day right now is if something overpressures. I did the wet your finger trick and then run it along here. I think it's pretty good, but... Uh, Let's give it a shot. I mean, this printed with, did I do infill on this? No, I did 100%. So that should seal on the corners and stuff. Uh, there's, less, there's less material in the sidewall 
around the cooling section, which may or may not bite us in the ass. There's, it looks like there's a little error right there. That might actually leak right there. But uh, I have not tested this. Any, any trouble that we get into, we're going to get out with uh, silicon. A-plus streamer quality manufacturing. Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? We, um, I, I, you have, maybe you haven't been around to as a sister, but my, my whole 3D printer has been upgraded. Um, it's now Clipper. It's not running Marlin anymore. I like Clipper a lot. Actually, yeah, you were there for the, the upgrades, but you're saying it looks pretty damn good. I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> it's spitting out PETG like it's its job. I guess it is. Um, but Clipper, Clipper Octo Print, Octo J just spat out his coffee. Uh, Clipper Octo Print and um, the CR10S with the, the Titan Arrow Direct Drive head. That is a nice combo. I'm printing like this in, this took like 40 minutes to print. Yeah, cl a Clipper, uh, one of the advantages to Clipper in my mind is that all the settings are on one sheet. You just have a big settings sheet that you edit. Um, I like that. That's very adva advantageous. <laughs> uh, Marlin was like 60 different settings in 50 different places. It, it basically went together like it was manufactured by the auto industry uh, in that it's built on top of older systems and they've built on top of older systems for several generations. It's, it's time to start over, Marlin. <laughs> Yeah, the text file settings is, is probably the biggest advantage to Clipper. In addition to the fact that it's it's taking all of... I could have not done the 32-bit processor or whatever, how many, however many bits this is, 8 plus bits. I could, have, I could have kept the 8-bit processor in the old printer and run it on Clipper and probably gotten really good results. We found out that the whole string of upgrades was literally just due to a broken wire going to the bed. It was a sparking wire going to the bed, so obviously I had to upgrade everything. Um, this controller that was sent in by Twisted Sister, we're going to use for Burn the Subs. And I'm going to turn this into, yeah, 32. Uh, I'm going to turn Burn the Subs into a clipper-powered system because Gerbil, G-R-B-L, which is the laser XY table Arduino system, also employed inertial stuff, like inertial uh, calculations in order to get the laser to move properly. Well, Clipper does that too, uh, but Clipper's actually still supported. Uh, Gerbil went out of support in 2019. So in order to do a, a proper round of upgrades, I'm actually going to incorporate this controller into Burn the Subs. So that should be pretty cool. But before we do that, because it's Burn the Subs, I'm going to water cool it. I'm going to water cool it against its will. I'm going to water cool everything I can, except maybe the motors. I think I'm going to leave the motors unwater cooled because I don't want the water system to be too complicated. So there's this whole family of hardware from AlphaCool, who I find myself buying from more often than not, which is odd. AlphaCool just makes everything that I use because I'm, I'm a psycho weirdo idiot. So one of the things that they make, aside from small radiators, small radiators, is water blocks what are designed for a Raspberry Pi. Does the Raspberry Pi need to be water cooled? Absolutely fucking not. In no, under no circumstances does the Raspberry Pi need to be water-cooled. Unless I was enclosing this thing in literal fucking, like, like heat insulation. There's no reason for me to ever even consider water-cooling a Raspberry Pi. So naturally, I am. Um, and then the motor controllers, I'm going to put water-cooling on just because they get warm. It actually turns out the big stepper motor that we use for the, the X-axis and burn the subs, if you really, really hate on that motor, uh, the controller can overheat, but you really need to put the hurt down on it, and it doesn't, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't use nearly that much current. We'll do it anyway, though. I'll just have the water cooler turn on when it's burning a name. So in that vein, it's not unheard of to water cool a laser. Because this diode is putting so much hurt down on the... Man, I already used that phrase. I should change it. Twisted sister, what the, what the hell are you doing? I gotta, I gotta move tabs in order to read what you said. Here's a dollar, kid. Go buy yourself a laser. I have, I have two more of these diodes in a bit. Well, thank you for the 50 friggin' dollars. I, I really appreciate that. That does go a long way. I have to declare that on taxes. Oh, build, not buy. What ha, what ha, huh? Listen, <laughs> we got a question today about building a radio so that, that somebody could listen in on wider spectrums. And it's like, 
you should just go buy a radio. You should do a little bit of research and just go buy a radio. You don't need to build everything from scratch. Sometimes we get questions in the question section where people are trying to like be vague about stuff and that does not work. You need to be specific. Cause we don't know, we don't know if you're just like a hobbyist who actually wants to learn the fundamentals of, of radio or an electronics enthusiast, or if you just want to buy something that does the job and get into the actual, like, you know, I want to look at what's on, you know, what, what signals are present. Uh, uh, radio is a big thing, right? Yeah, that's a trench radio, the World War I trench radio. I don't know how useful those are these days. I guess we're still broadcasting in AM, so you could probably get that. <laughs> you could get radio on the fillings of your teeth if you're crazy. Um, anyway, it's not unheard of to water cool a laser. Uh, the, the diode in the laser is doing a lot of work. It's doing a lot of work and it's generating a lot of heat. So we put together this system and I made a little cool looking water jacket for the whole thing because that whole, that whole uh, ecosystem of alpha cool products also includes a little distribution reservoir thingy, a little distributor item that, that plugs into the rest of the water cooling stuff. So we've got a 12 volt pump Actually, I had to upgrade the pump on the thing. And then um, we have these distribution blocks that allow us to parallel everything. So we're not just firing a shit ton of pressure down one tube. We're actually sending it out in parallel to everything at once. Um, found out the pump's a little strong. A little strong. I thought, I thought we could slow down our flow rate quite a bit, and it would be actually kind of impossible to send all the water out to everything, uh, including the laser, which is miles away in terms of what the tube has to do. So I, I bought a bunch of the silicon tubing and then I hand measured against the, the drag chains for the wires. I'm gonna have to rewire burn the subs, by the way. I'll put a big D sub connector on the side here. But when you liquid cool certain devices, do you ever put on your own conformal coating? Uh, if, you, if you consider spilling liquid in a keyboard to be water cooling, then yes. Yes, I have. I conformal coated the back of my my old 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 keyboard because it kept spilling shit in it uh it actually it actually helped um the electronics are very sensitive to getting droplets of water on it uh for some reason a weird design but uh you gotta be careful with conformal coating because some um some crystals require air exchange they have a little uh, hole in the back uh that you don't see but it requires to be at like like normal air pressure uh, which is a problem that people had with their iphones in an x-ray facility because liquid nitrogen uh, N2 spilled, and so the nitrogen gas got into the air, and so the clocks in people's iPhones went kaput. And you turn your phone off, and then you get out of the nitrogen environment and wait like a couple hours, and then turn the phone back on, it works again. But uh, it actually altered the, the crystal frequency and screwed up a bunch of iPhones. Oh yeah, was it liquid helium? Yeah, sorry, it was, a, it was an MRI, so it was a liquid helium. Yeah, 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 not nitrogen. Which, uh, which says something about the exposure to nitrogen, though. Yeah, that's what I was referencing. I love uh, Lucille Ball, not the I love Lucy lady. Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball, Lu Lucille Ball is the reason that uh, Star Trek The Next Generation could be remastered so, so wonderfully. She insisted on filming it on film. And it's also the reason that Star Trek, the original series, got to be rebroadcasted. There's, there's a whole thing behind that. And that's why it was so popular, because they could rebroadcast it. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Helium leak disabled every iPhone in a medical facility. I don't think it was every, but it was a lot. <laughs> keep, your, keep your iPhones away from helium, people. Yeah, it, I mean, possibly going crazy, but possibly also something with an antenna. I don't know. And ten I anyway, the point is, uh, water cooling a laser. I we've we've tried three times and we're gonna try again today. Uh this will be try number four or five. I I don't know. I don't know why I'm counting that. Um we've tried and tried and tried, and it's not something unheard of. It's not something weird that I'm doing here. I am using 3D printing in order to put this thing together. Yeah, so people people ask these kinds of questions, which is I guess an appropriate question. I print in PETG and I print without fans. I print without fans and I print on PETG and I've wanted to try something like this for some time because PETG is throwing down layers so hot 
that they actually do a decent job of melding with one another. Now, in terms of how watertight is it? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is two layers of PETG making up these sidewalls. Uh, so the interlayer adhesion, I mean, it should be pretty high on PETG. PETG should be pretty decent, like pretty damn decent layer adhesion. I'm printing at 0.3 uh, layer height. I think a third of a millimeter for each layer. And then we put caulk around, I put my caulk all over the two ends. Um, each hole, each hole gets caulk and then I, I wipe my finger across it in order to smooth it out. So that's, that's the method here. The problems that we were having were with the caulk, uh, as, as one in four men can attest. Um, I wasn't giving it time to seal. So when we hit it with all that water pressure, it would just pop. Yeah, it's just silicon. It's just regular old caulk. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, it needs that. Um, the tough elastic sealant for every job. I don't, I don't know. I got this at an Ace Hardware store. I just walked in and bought this. This is like years ago. So this stuff I'm shocked is still even gelatinous at this point. But, uh, you know, I bought, I bought some stuff like this when I was doing brewing in order to seal stuff up. All right. So yeah, we got one around here. I like Ace Hardware. We got them in Pennsylvania. I don't know. Oh boy. So this is going to fail again. Uh, this is going to fail again. And I'm hoping that it's in a unique way because there's, okay. So, so what happens if this fails, right? If we get a leak between the layers here, if we get a leak between layers here, uh, what do I do? Well, there's a method of packing salt around a 3d print and then putting it in an oven. So I actually could try that and that'll create uh, a very professional looking surface from this thing. Um, and, and maybe that'll get us there. Maybe that'll get us to the water seal. But I am, I am confident that this thing will not leak between layers. I don't think the layers are going to pop open in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I want to test the salt method. I'll have, to, I'll have to run into all the problems with that when I do. and run headfirst into all the problems. Um, but I, I, I'm confident that this is sealed just because of the temperatures that I'm printing at. When those, when that hot plastic gets laid down, I think it's creating a pretty nice, a pretty, pretty significant amount of adhesion. I mean, when I go to break these prints, they often will shatter, but they'll shatter not exactly evenly across a layer. Obviously, the the structure of the layer does sort of guide the crack to be across it, but at the same time, sorry, burping. At the same time, I see a lot of the break traveling in weird directions. I didn't take a sip of water and I was trying to get to the end of that sentence. Plaster Paris. Well, so the salt packing method is essentially doing that. Uh, salt packing, you know, salt's an easy to find material. You grind it so that it's got a finer grain and then you pack it in a, in a, in a heat safe dish of whatever you do. And then you, you pack it around you pack it around your print and then you bake your print and it'll it'll sort of make a solid piece of plastic out of that thing. So. Right. Yeah, that's essentially what you're describing, except that plaster Paris, you'd have to break away the plastic. We've got an internal structure in here. So sand or salt in this case, packing. Great. Uh, ah, fuck. All right. We I, I can't dawdle anymore. We got to do this. I can't dawdle. The water's looking pretty gross. Maybe I want to like... No, stop dawdling. Stop dawdling. Just get water on your desk already. Stupid streamer. Do the thing. All right, first exposure. First exposure and no air is leaking away. One of the, one of the surefire initial signs... Move the $100 of boards out of the way. Oh, God, you're right. Oh, God, you're right. Put them up here. <laughs> Our leaks weren't that well. Actually, the leaks in the past were pissing on me. So yeah, um, one of the one of the the, sure, the the initial signs of a bad leak is when I hook it up like this, and air is able to escape. When air is able to escape, then the 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 water fills the lines and eventually comes out of the leak down here. So that's not happening right now, or is it? Are we seeing bubbles? I don't see no bubbles. <sighs> really don't want to have to do the salt packing thing, but this is probably going to end up pissing on me. 
here's here's what's gonna let's temper expectations so what's gonna happen here is that this thing we're gonna see water fill up this thing and the bubbles will go away and i'll be like ah oh, it's working great and then it starts it'll just start pissing on me right it'll just it'll just fire out a little water gun out of one of the uh the caulked seals and then i'm gonna have to take my caulk and i'm gonna have to reapply it to that spot and then we gotta wait another day and a half for the the stuff to fully set so that it doesn't piss on me again essentially um all right so we got we got water to laser hooked up no leaks so now we turn on the water and i'll let's do a microscope view of that let's do a microscope view of that so you guys can see what i see which is the bubbles exiting bubbles exiting the building I'm gonna try to position that properly. I yeah, I guess I guess I could apply the it's silica, it's not super glue. Um I could I could apply silicon to the sides. I don't like using super glue with PETG because it tends to melt things. It like it like really makes it the PETG very melty when I do that. Ah crap, hold on. I'm gonna fix my camera work here. I, I know this is like prolonging it, but <laughs> You guys have to deal with me being a little theatric about this because it's very simple what we're doing, but I want to I make sure to capture everything. I want to make sure to capture everything. Be good about that. I tend to talk too fast when I stream, and I, 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 need, to, I need lessons in slowing down. Slowing it down. Slow down. There's a speed limit. All right, so right around here, we can... Bother. There we go. All right. <sighs> Embrace failure. And I don't want to turn it on because it'll fail. As soon as I touch anything around here, that camera's going to move, isn't it? It's doing okay right now. Dunk it in Plasti Dip. There's no dunking with Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip is a spray adhesive, spray coating, not adhesive. All right, three, two, one, go. Well, the pump's making weird noises. I don't think any water is flowing to this thing right now. Okay, there's a bubble. There's a bubble in the pump. Bubble in the pump! That's going to be a problem. So these reservoirs, uh, well, like the positioning of the pump right now is not great. It uh, it sits at the top of this little at this at this manifold. So if there's enough if there's enough flow to the or sorry if there's enough flow, air is going to get to the pump, and it's enough air that'll that'll stop it from running. Right? We need to I need to position the pump in a more strategic location in order to prevent that. So what I need to do is just shake it around. Actually, what if I wait? The reservoir is closed. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let's get that off. What's going on here? <laughs> That's not right. Use the largest hex key known to man. Or to undo this this reservoir. Oh boy, when I undo this, is it gonna is it gonna puke? Well now water can flow all the way down. Or it could before. I mean now uh uh water pressure can drive the water down <sighs> what am i even saying all right let's get well, there was no air in there it doesn't look like there is oh no never mind those are big bubbles those are big bubbles that we just got out all right let's try it again without the bubbles there will be more bubbles that have to be shaken out of this oh well i told you what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? I said it would leak. <laughs> All right, it's coming from right there. Notice how it's leaking at precisely the location that my finger wipes across. Yeah, that was inevitable. Everything's fine. No, it's not. Exactly what I said would happen is going to happen. This is, why, this is why I did it on air. I wanted you guys to see the process. I probably should have done this off air, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. All right, so I got to dry this out, and then we'll try again once I once I cock it. We'll try again on Thursday. Well, 
It's going to work. I'm telling you, we just keep running into these kinds of problems. <sighs> yeah, so it's literally right there. Let's take a look at that. Let's see that part. Uh, doing O-rings is going to be very difficult to do. I mean, I, I do want to get an O-ring kit, but uh, printing the O-ring races is very difficult to do with 3D printing. Uh, it can be done. I could, I could do it with O-rings, surely, but I need two O-rings on each of these and then two of four, probably two. I, if I do one O-ring, these probably need two. This thing could do one on each side, but then I would need to plan for the O-rings. I need to pressure the O-rings. It's, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Compression type fittings. L listen, chat. <laughs> what? Why don't you use uh, laser-guided uh, camera, camera munitions in order to... I, look, I don't need to do all of this complicated stuff, guys. Uh, it's literally just like a blob of caulk needs to go right there. And then we're done. <laughs> Come on. Why don't you re-engineer the whole thing for the ground up? No, I'm just going to solve this one little problem. It's one little problem. One little problem, that's it. So yeah, it's just it's just me. I just couldn't, you know, if I redesigned this thing so that the, the fittings were a finger's width away, then I could properly wipe the, the caulk around all this stuff and it would it would be nice and clean. But unfortunately, that's not the reality we live in. So I'm just going to put a dollop of it on this thing and then that'll be it. Because it'll work. I promise you. We've just been having troubles with that because I've needed time. One thing I don't have around here is time in order to let things set. So yeah, put that aside for now. I'm going to wipe up my mess. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to reverse engineer this protocol, which probably means I need to take the whole wheel over here and set it up at the desk. Uh, we'll get it done, though. We'll get it done, though. Thursday, we're doing night vision. Friday, hopefully, I'll have everything I need to do the shifter. Yeah, I wanted to start work on this protocol because it's going to be a serial protocol uh, that we need to observe and then reverse engineer because I don't want to I don't want to put these electronics in the wheel and if I were to implement if I were to implement it the way that it is right now I could probably put both bluetooth low energy devices god my stomach will not let me do anything today uh put two little uh put both of the bluetooth low energy devices inside the enclosure and they would just talk to one another like uh, an inch away uh I don't want to have to do that though I would rather digitally plug the Arduino into the Granite Devices pins and then and then move those via software. And it's much cleaner and it allows me to fully utilize the Lidden bus and we'll have every button on the wheel functioning, which means I can do like high and low gear switching on it and, and all, all those other fancy things that I wanted to do with the wheel. We ran into a problem where the Granite Devices controller can only take so many buttons in. So I couldn't actually map out all of the buttons on the steering wheel. With this, I can, but I want to do it digitally. Let's spend a hundred dollars to do this. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm pissed off, and I'm pissed on because of this shit. <laughs> All right, let's get this moved kind of out of the way, but still up here. And then I need to get the controller. I'm gonna unplug all these. Oh dear God! I almost fucking. All right, let's back way the hell up. You guys are now eight feet tall. Like all my friends, all my IRL friends would tower over me. All right. I'm not even short. I'm like average height. <laughs> Just everybody, everybody I hang out with is fucking tall as hell. I don't know what happened. What are they, what are they eating? I don't understand. <laughs> all right. Grand Devices Controller. Let's get that over here. So put everything in this box. This heavy little box right here. I'm going to get the laser glasses out of the way so I don't scratch them. Everything's in this box. All we need forever. Um, the question is, can I run this without this thing around? Without plugging it into the wheel? Can I run that without plugging it into the wheel? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I can. Okay, so we don't need to bring the wheel over for this. Which is good, because I only have so much desk space. <laughs> I only have so much desk space. But let's get this thing running. So these are somewhat... I mean, they're not permanently attached. I could remove them. Uh, we need to look at the effect of 
pressing a button on the board. We don't need all these buttons hooked up at the moment. All right, so yeah, we can we can fully utilize this without without plugging it in. Without doo -doo -doo. yeah, so all the all the position encoder uh, signals are sent on this cable, but this cable also includes the LIN bus, and the LIN bus takes it out, takes our signal all the way out to everything surrounding. So the pedals, the shifter, they're all LIN bus devices. So when I build the shifter, I'm gonna put an Arduino in that thing, and then those seven buttons will become a serialized signal. Who makes the steering wheel? It's a, it's a Mercedes steering wheel. Uh, I, I, let me just put it on the ground. I'll put it on the ground and we'll see if it doesn't annoy the, the piss out of me. All right. Dear God, why did I build this thing? Ugh. Jesus Christ. So the, um, the steering wheel's Mercedes. It's hooked up to an 18 pound three phase uh, motor. It's an industrial motor. Um, and then it's got a shifter from an E46 M3, the Steptronic shifter. But the Steptronic shifter wasn't a digital device. The Steptronic sy uh, system, sh blah, 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 blah. the Steptronic shifter used actual pins in order to communicate the positions of switches. So we had to reverse engineer that and the PCB on that thing, the actual electronics design on that thing was mad. It was just absolutely crazy. Um, we reverse engineered that. I built a slip ring, a slip ring for the steering wheel so that we could get our 12 volts ground and LIN bus back and forth to the wheel. But because the wheel doesn't actually have physical stops on it, we had to go 180 degrees, right? I couldn't just do a long cable. So now when this thing is powered off, you can do that with it. If I put a clock spring from an actual car in this system, the only thing doing the end stop would be plastic. And so when moving this heavy fucking piece of equipment around, it would be likely that I would snap the clock spring. So in order to get around that, we gave it 180 degrees of motion. So yeah, anyway, we've got all that stuff working, right? We reverse engineered the electronics in the wheel. I know that's a BMW logo, but that's just an airbag cover that I happen to have, right? <laughs> if I were to go full, full into the Granite Devices wireless wheel thing, because what Granite Devices did is the other method of doing 180 degree spins on the wheel. They just went wireless and supposedly they can get like a year of life out of this thing with the battery hooked up. So what I could do is I could pull that thing off, tear it down again, hook all of the buttons into these because the buttons are actually physically coupled with a circuit board in the middle. And then maybe, maybe I would have the, the control in order to make this thing like turn on the, the orange LEDs that are behind everything. Uh, I could have the horn button on it. Uh, I could maybe even put a screen on there if this thing supports that. I think it might. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is reverse engineer this protocol so that I can use the LIN bus that's already doing all of the functions of this wheel in order to communicate back with the thing. Now, if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to go crazy, I could probably make a separate LIN bus device and put a screen operating off of that. And then, and then this microcontroller could send it data because this microcontroller is basically doing all the signal interpretation for everyone. It speaks LIN bus from a particular chip and communicates LIN bus out to all of my peripherals. We invented a peripheral for the, for the shifter. We invented a peripheral for the, the pedals. They all speak LIN bus. There's three packets on my bus right now. Talking about my caulk and now we're talking about my bus. This is a, an adult stream. Um, anyway, so if I can figure out, if I can figure out what language this thing is speaking, what the ones and the zeros represent, then I can couple the microcontroller directly into the pins for the receiver. Well, it's a transceiver, but whatever. We'll call this the receiver. I can directly control the receiver and send information on button presses to that, and that unlocks a ton of buttons. How do we get an airbag cover for the wheel? I missed that part. <laughs> I was trying, yeah, I was trying to three scan uh, and print something. I bought a BMW M wheel, right? I bought just a BMW M, I, I, it might actually, it wasn't an M wheel. I bought a BMW steering wheel and it didn't have paddles on it. 
And so that's why I bought this Mercedes wheel. But with the BMW wheel, since it was a scrap or whatever, it also came with an airbag. So I had to disarm an airbag, and then that left me with a front cover. I got the back cover sitting around somewhere. And then the detonators I have in an ammo can in the corner of the shop. <laughs> Those are dangerous. <laughs> I just got them sitting around. Bunch of airbag detonators. Uh, that was a little weird. But anyway, so I have the front cover for just a random airbag. Um, what, I, what I did with that wheel is my car, my 528, is a 1999. Um, and it's an older style of BMW, so the steering wheel is very thin. It still has all the controls on it. But... I swapped that out. It's actually the same exact wheel that's in uh, Monbazu. <laughs> the same wheel as Monbazu. So I was thinking, like, if I really wanted to actually swap that thing out, I think the splines that, that couple with the wheel are the same. I didn't put a quick disconnect on the, on the steering wheel, right? Because they're, they're expensive. So we just, I bought for $20, I bought a uh, Mercedes, a Mercedes uh, steering column. Yeah, Mercedes steering column. And I just freaking put it under the bandsaw and cut the front off. And that's how we're coupling to the steering wheel on that wheel. So uh, that wheel spline and the coupling are very similar, if not the same thing that's on that BMW wheel. So I could technically, like if I, if I did the wireless wheel thing, I could buy another one of these for like $75 and then put a battery in my other wheel. And so I could swap the wheels back and forth. So when we play Monbazu, I would actually have a BMW <laughs> steering wheel, which is... I don't know. I don't feel like blowing that much smoke up my own ass. I don't, I don't really want to do that. This wheel's fine. I like it a lot. Um, it's very thick and it's leathery. I like things thick and leathery. What is this stream? What is, I should censor everything. Um, so anyway, a uh, lot, of, lot of weird stuff going on here. I, I could put a screen in the wheel, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really going to. Does this wheel have the airbag? No, there's no airbag there. And, and oh, by the way, the airbag cover for a Mercedes S-Class wheel of this generation is $350. So I'm not going to fucking buy that just to, again, blow, blow more smoke up my ass. <sighs> so, um, yeah. I was going to talk about something else, and I just totally lost the thread. I just completely, the thread just dropped. I, it's like walking into a room and not knowing why you're even on the planet. Um, yeah, here's, here's everything in situ. We're going to plug this in. And I guess I'm just going to clip to the pins. I could make like a standoff that is a cable coming out of it. I could do all kinds of fancy shit, but I mean, we basically just want to get the signal on these pins and clipping to it should be okay. It plugs in over here, I believe. We'll have to look up all the, uh, the pinouts and stuff. Oh no. <laughs> uh oh it might not fit no it'll fit it fits okay so plug and play this should be although i do not know what kind of weirdness we're going to encounter i'll plug in the rest of the wheel too let me just plug that in while we're at it while we're at it we just won't have as many devices on the bus but yeah these all these cables are there because i had to go in and fool the controller into thinking that buttons are pressed. This could have been solved for free by the company if they published their API, and then I would be able to digitally communicate with the rest of this stuff. But Granite Devices has changed their focus from these DIY-y kind of things, the Simu Cube, and gone over to systems what require, yeah, <laughs> systems what require you to buy an entire device, including the wheel and all the stuff, right? They sell like a closed system now. They still support SimuCube, but it's uh, lesser and lesser every, every day. All right, you guys are just looking at the back of my head, right? Yeah, I'll bring you guys over like this. There we go. Now you guys get a view You're perched up above me. Now, where did I put the little stopper? Is that, there it is. Plug in the motor with the original industrial connectors. I actually found a kit for this, this digital connector, which is wild. It's wild that something like that exists. So he kept the original Mitsubishi cable. Cause like in an industrial scenario, like this is just a wire, right? It's just a bunch of wires with a connector on the end. That's all, that's all it is in an industrial scenario. The cables are like, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'm not kidding about this either. These cables are hundreds of dollars. If you buy them, like if you buy just directly buy a, a, like a like a connector, like a cable rather, 
You can buy the connector kit for relatively cheap though, which was nice. That's why we kept this. This is actually a pretty cool connector. It's got a little twisty majig on it. And it's got all kinds of cool stuff. I added the spring as strain relief. That was my touch, but yeah. What I do need is I need better strain relief on this part of the cable. We'll figure that out one day when it breaks. <laughs> when it breaks and I have to repair it. All right, come on. I got to get the arrows lined up. Where's the arrow? Arrow. Arrow to arrow. Arrow to... There it goes. Okay. So just like that. And then I got the connector all the way over there. That connector in the corner is for the pedals, but they're not going to need that anymore. It's, that's not going to be necessary anymore because the uh, this box is going to go on the pedals. And so that'll be directly connected. But yeah, that's the, that's the wheel connection. So I can now... Ooh, it's getting a little scrapey in there. I can hear the, the turnbuckle making noise. Yep. I'll need, I'll need a little maintenance on that soon. Anyway, um, that's everything assembled. So we can now power this thing on and connect it to USB. And then we can look up. Well, let me just verify the functionality of the whole thing first and make sure we got all the software on this computer. Up, 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 up. Yeah, it's a very fancy connector. I like it a lot. I would love to use it in other projects, but I don't know. I don't, I don't use connectors all that much. Um, I need power, I need USB. When we find USB, ugh, I think that's over here. It should be with the controller. I should keep all those cables with it at all times. And I don't. <laughs> what? Damn it. <laughs> Where are the, damn it. <laughs> cables that I specifically keep with this device. How do they, why do they walk? Ah. Where did they go? USB, is that you? Hello? Oh my god, it's like hot out. <laughs> it's like 70 degrees out. What happened? What's that one? That one's a cut cable. That's not the right one. All right, what did I do with the wires? Oh, I left them plugged in. That's right. This one's here. I left them plugged into the stream computer because I thought I'd be streaming more, which I'm trying to do, but not really succeeding at. The USB cable should probably be plugged in, although I don't know that I just shove it behind stuff. Yeah, I just shoved it behind stuff. Where's that cable? Should be here. Sorry, I'm rattling through my desk right now to try to <laughs> try to get all this stuff together. It's more complicated than it sounds, okay? There she there she blows. I got kind of a thick cable. What am I thinking with this cable? Oh, it's got a little thing on it. Okay. <clears throat> that didn't unplug. What? What? I want to do something like that for the umbilical cord that goes from my desk to my electrical rack. Ah, get rid of about 10 cables. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I would love for the rack because like you can what i would love to do is design my streaming rack over there to have its own back panel bring all the wires that go externally to its own panel maybe a keyway panel or something and then have all the plugins back there so that the outside world is is fully severed from the from the inside of the rack but i don't know that's a, it's a little too much <laughs> that gets to be a little too much Ooh, this strain relief is kind of suffering right here that's not very good that's going to be trouble. I'm not careful. This one right here. Um, all right. So we got all our stuff. And this is just a high amperage power supply. I put painter's tape on it because uh, it was way too reflective. And the studio lights hated it. So we've got painter's tape on that for good reason. USB. With the logo up. Bonk. A nice strong connector. I'm glad they used that type of USB because if they used a different one, oh boy. <laughs> they used if they if they uh fell into temptation and used a USB micro. I hate the U oh god. Always with the cold soldering on those connectors, you know? I don't know why manufacturers cannot get it right, but they cannot get it right. They do not know how to solder a USB connector on, and that's what that's what killed their old webcam. Still waiting for the Kurokesu stuff to ship, by the way. Uh, it's, it's not looking great. I, I hope, I mean, Kurokesu was very far away from all the conflict there in Europe, but uh, 
I haven't heard back from him. <laughs> I really hope they'll send it, though. I really hope things are okay. All right, that plugs in. And then, I don't know, we could plug this in in the back over here. Just in our little, our little extension plug. That means that in order to get to the computer, it has to go into a seven-port hub. Yeah. No, no, USB, USB micro and mini, I managed to do that with, too. You know, the USB-A shuffle that everybody does. Why would you make a square connector that only plugs in one way? And then it has the little, the little plastic tongue that just breaks off. Terrible. Bad design. Oh well. At least it at least it did a good job replacing serial connections. I hate I mean, man, USB is such an advantage over serial connection, like the old school serial connections that would break your computer if you unplug it. You unplug your mouse? Oh no, you're not gonna get a mouse back. <laughs> it's over. It has the high ground. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have. What's our hardware? I mean I can just show you guys this thing power up. We'll just we'll just verify it by powering it up. 25 pin serial, I guess. Most of, like, why are all those extra pins there? Oh, they're there for uh, expansion, and then they nobody ever did anything with them. Boop, boop. Now this thing should center itself suddenly. There we go. That's the wheel, functioning. Oh yeah, feel that spring back. We configured all that stuff in software. It all works well. Works very well, actually. So. I verified that this thing works properly. We need to get the software, and then we need to figure out how the hell we're plugging this thing in. So I'm gonna power it down for now so I don't electrocute myself by putting my arm over something my arm shouldn't. The AC, all of the AC is like in this little section right here. So it's actually it's actually pretty safe like this. It's just a lot of DC voltages running around. Um, it's like two-ish plus horsepower, I think which can actually do like, you know, it'll feel like driving a go-kart if I turn it all the way up. It can overpower me. <laughs> that's, that's what the wheel's all about. Um, all right, so, uh, granite, devices, SimuCube. Oh, wireless wheel software? Oh, this is for, I think this is for later stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need, we don't need the wireless wheel software. They have they have a whole product they have a whole uh, family of products that came after uh, what I have here so we need to figure out the pinouts so that we can set up our, our lab setup so we can do some proper reverse engineering on this thing now if we really need to get into it I can take an Arduino and I can make that into a signal interpreter but the first step in any one of these projects is to get everything hooked up and functioning so let's do that yeah this is what I have. And it only cost me like a billion dollars. <laughs> it sucks. These are not cheap, but Granite Devices is one of the few companies out there that's actually making uh, universal servo drives. That's what the Argon is, which opens up eBay. So I actually have one of these and I did spend that much money on it uh, because if you do real industrial servo systems, you're gonna be spending 12, 14 times that amount of money. It's ridiculous. So, so this servo drive opens up eBay to me as a place to get motors and control them. Of course, uh, if you do the lower voltage DC systems, they got all the stuff for you here, but man, you gotta buy this card along with the rest of everything. So this card is actually uh, there to control the motors themselves. They've got two levels of these things. So if I bought one of these, the Pros, I bought the slightly cheaper ones that are, yeah, I bought, you know, I didn't buy the, I didn't buy the one, 170 one. I bought the, yeah, I bought the 140 one because we're not, I wasn't using that much current in everything, but apparently uh, like five amps is locked off to me. So I can't go full, full power. I can go close. And I do actually have an Ioni cube sitting in a bin over there for Burn the Subs 3. D-Sub 20 gaming port? 
uh, it's no, it's for other, it's for, it's for all of your, your encoder signals and stuff like that. The D sub connector is not just a computer peripheral connector. It's used fairly regularly for all kinds of, of different, uh, systems because you've got all those, those tabs there. They're easy to solder to, and they can take up to five amps at any reasonable amount of DC current. You can do a lot of stuff with the DC. I have a DB 37 on the 3d printer. Doesn't mean that it's a computer per, uh, port. <laughs> you just follow your own pinout. All right, uh, there it is. Finally, one hundred and sixty dollars. Sigh. <laughs> you guys paid for it. Anyway, um, we need to look at. The, I don't think they even sell. Do they sell this thing in the store? Actually, follow that. Find it rather. No, they don't even sell the wireless thing in the store. What kind of crap is that? <laughs> there's my baby right there look at him look at him go all right so we need to, i actually need the pin out of the wireless wheel module so this is none of this is helping i could go to the wiki i'll, I'll end up finding the wiki by just searching so uh simu wimu simu cube wireless wheel module there he is Look at, look at this. Look at it. Look at it. Keep looking at it. Don't look away. You're not allowed to look away. You have to look at this. It's a good design. It's clean. I like the circuit board. Uh, they did a very nice job on it. They charge way too much, um, but that's because of what's inside this little microcontroller here. So I'm going to guess that uh, PM5, oh God, 555, really? PM5, PW555 is a microcontroller. Let's just try it. So PW555-85K. Uh, Hello? Wow, Google's great these days. It's really very functional, very good functional website. Very functional website you guys have here. TCA555, low voltage, 16-bit I2C in a SIM bus. I, what? I don't, what? Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, wee, whoa, whoa. Hold on a minute. This is it just a port expander? Hello. Ooh, this changes the game. This changes the game quite a bit. This is it a different one? Damn it. <laughs> I was hoping they put a port expander just at the end of a uh, of a, a Bluetooth low energy. I would think they have an entire microcontroller to do this. But if it's a port expander, ah, ooh, that would be nice. This is TCA nine five five five. What do we have? Let's look at it properly on the microscope. They also have used conformal coating on this thing. So very, very actually have they? No. No, there's not. Never mind. I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. We got a poo 555, not a pukuh 555. PW. Alright, let's find the PW. Definitely looked up the PW555, but we're getting the TCA9555. PW on all data sheet. What are you? What is this? Who is this? Where am I? What? A, uh, huh? What's going on here? SJM Prewell. That doesn't sound right. Gain wideband amplifier. There we go. That's definitely what it is. All right. Uh. PWR. Are we going with it actually being the, this? I mean, that's interesting, but you found it on Alibaba. TCA 955 PWR. But in the picture, it says PW. Pew. Well, that, I'm excited about that. That actually 
simplifies our protocol immensely. Oh boy, oh boy. Here I go again. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. All we need to do is make our microcontroller pretend that it's this chip. And this chip, we know everything about it. We've got a whole data sheet sitting right here with its, uh, with its, with its Ghibli bits visible. Look at that. Ooh, that's, uh, that's pornographic. Yeah, here I go stabbing protocols again. There you go. Thank you for, for closing that, that weird hanging chat of a reference. Oh, God, that one's even worse. Anyway, uh, <laughs> look at this fucker. Oh, that's exciting. I'm super... Yeah, here, here, references. Uh, oh, no, never mind. So this is, this is cool. So what, what um, Granite Devices has done... What Granite Devices has done is they have taken... Um, well, they... How do, uh, what have they done? They said, oh, man, it would be cool if we had more buttons on this thing. How do we go about putting more buttons on this thing? And the way to put more buttons on this thing is you get your microcontroller to speak ones and zeros into a chip called a port expander. And a port expander, you know, you see microcontrollers all over the place and they got a billion pins on them all over. God damn it. I wish I had just looked at, I wish I had just looked at this. I could have saved $90 by looking at this picture. You know, I, I was joking around when I said, you guys have to look at this and you have to look close and you can't look away. Cause this is like, ah oh man, ah oh man. I guess it's nice that I actually have the thing in hand, but I'm still, I'm reeling over this right now, you guys. I'm reeling over the fact that I spent $90 on a little Bluetooth low energy thing that goes into a port. I could have spent $5 and, and, and built this. <laughs> and and even, even aside from that, aside from this thing only being like $5 and some shipping, uh, I could have not reverse engineered it and just seen this and we could have made our digital protocol. Although, although, yeah, that actually, you're right, you're right. That probably is where the microcontroller is. You're actually right about that. Never mind. Okay, good. My thoughts were Granite Devices sat down and they said, how do we put more buttons into this thing? And typically what you would do, you know, you see all these different microcontrollers all over the place, right? All these different microcontrollers doing all these jobs, controlling washing machines and all that other perverted shit that microcontroller does. Um, you see them controlling a bunch of stuff. It doesn't, sometimes you see these giant microcontrollers with a billion pins, right? Um, the way that you get more I.O. into a microcontroller without it getting a larger microcontroller with more pins, um, use a port expander. And so you can digitally communicate with that port expander quickly enough that you can do something like build a, build a controller or like for human interface and stuff like that. Obviously, serializing all of your inputs is going to slow things down a bit. But if you pull that often enough, you can pull off all kinds of cool, fancy shit with them. You can control LCDs. You can do all kinds of neat stuff. You can turn things into what are essentially I2C peripherals or whatever serial protocol you're using. SPI is a lot faster. You know, you just drop port expander on there. So uh, originally I thought, uh, a minute ago, I thought that all Granite Devices did was went, wow, that's a, cool, uh, that's a cool serial line that you've got going on there. It would be a shame if somebody dropped a wireless protocol on it. And so I thought that what they did is they just put a... TX and RX of a, of, of like a, an RF module in there. I don't think that's, I, I've reconsidered now that chat mentioned it. Um, I've reconsidered these, these little like Bluetooth, et cetera, modules, it, it, your, your ESP 8266s, your whatever else, they have brains in them and they often have very capable brains in them that you can program alongside of their wi wireless protocol uh, parts. So in this case, uh, it probably, it's likely that that thing right there is not just a drop in TXRX. That's just a, this module is probably programmed with a bunch of wireless shenanigans in it and probably a packet structure, and maybe a manager for packets or something. I don't know. If it's one big packet that we're communicating back and forth, I will be very happy, but it's likely to be more than one packet. It probably has to like connect. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about that and the complexity of it. Thank you guys for the follows. I don't know where you're coming from, but I wish you wouldn't be here. No, I, I, mean, I mean, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean it. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is $90. Uh, 
Welcome, welcome to $90, uh, this in the receiver. So we gotta figure out how to program, blah, 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 blah. we gotta figure out how to plug this thing in because we're not even gonna use the module. This thing will go in a cabinet. It's, God, I hate engineering sometimes. <laughs> All right, so anyway, this whole thing is just gonna go in a cabinet. Wasting my money. As a designer, I really like the component arrays. Yeah, they did a good job on this. I like this board. This is a good board. Good little board. It's not like they don't deserve my money, right? <laughs> no, this is low energy Bluetooth. They say it lasts about a year on a battery too. So it might have it might have some some sleep stuff built into there too. It's sounding a lot like an ESP, but it is Bluetooth. It'd be funny if they if they had it connect to Wi-Fi and then somewhere on the network you had all your button presses. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm getting my wheels going today. Hey. If you guys don't know, that that is the fart box. Um, that is a dollar store fart noise generator that we hooked up to an ESP8266. And the ESP8266 logs under the network, gets into the, my Wi-Fi, gets its ass all up in my Wi-Fi, and then it logs into Twitch using their API, and then it waits for channel points rewards. I stuck that onto the front of my computer over there, hooked it up to a Harman Kardon speaker. It's that, that illuminated box over there. I haven't touched it in probably six months. <laughs> it just works. Uh, and so what that does is when you, re when you redeem the channel points, it'll make a farting noise. One of, a random one of nine farting noises. And the reason you can hear it so clearly on the mic is that it is physically in this space. So if I walk away from it, it'll get quieter. And it's annoying as shit. <laughs> My patience with it has been has been dwindling, but yeah. Hmm. So I mean, temperature sensors barely last nine months with as much power savings as I can push into them. Yeah, the claim of one year is probably under a large battery. I mean, you've got a steering wheel, so. Great engineering. Yeah. Uh, the only the only time I I mess with the fart box is when the SSL certificate expires or when. Uh, when the Twitch, uh, like, secret code, because you, you have to generate a secret code for all your robots. Um, that one has its own. What I really should do, I keep mentioning this, is make a flow in um, Node-RED that does all the authentication and stays on and retains that authentication. When that expires, it would go and get another one. Um, and that way, under node red, I could have flows that direct instructions to individual devices. So I can have like burn the subs sitting on the wall that will be connected via node red. And then node red does all that certificate stuff and all of my interactive stuff would then function off of that. Um, and then I could make a simple node for all of my devices and have instructions running to them. And I can do the more complicated sniffing of the um, XML packet in node kind of a pick off all the functionality. I should do that. And then I would have one single uh, access, I guess, to the Twitch API. 40K points can support a fart trip to Chipotle. Oh God. I was looking at channel points recently and I got a lot of channel points and a lot of channels. Dear God, <laughs> they don't, most streamers don't do anything with the channel points these days. So it's like, what do I do? You just keep, you just keep building up. Build up that, that, <laughs> I was going to say water balloon of farts, but that maybe is the wrong term. <laughs> Does this button panel board receive direct from the buttons or from the Lin bus? So in the Granite Devices uh, scheme of things, here, let's, uh, let me open that in a new window. In the Granite, what, what is this? This isn't the right. Grand Devices scheme of things, what this, what this little buddy here is designed to do, there's the diagram, it's designed to basically be the steering wheel at all times. This is how you get around having a wire coming out of your steering wheel, and some systems used to plug in to the back of the steering wheel uh, to simulate a uh, turnbuckle, that's not the right, a clock spring is what it's called in automotive terms, but with, with, a real steering wheel, you have end stops. You have physical stuff that's limiting the amount of steering that you can put into them. It'll stop your 
uh, wheel from turning a lot. And so they, you know, they design around that. You don't need to have like a like an expensive slip ring or a or a wireless protocol or anything like that you don't really want a wireless protocol on something like that in a real car so instead of doing all that stuff you just have a literal wire that's just wrapped one direction and then the other direction a couple times and that's it you just have it go in a repeatable path that's how you get your digital stuff onto a steering wheel that turns but with granite devices stuff you are putting a steering wheel on an industrial motor and that industrial motor does not have physical stops. It goes 100, 128,000 degrees. It goes exactly 392 degrees uh, before it explodes. No, it goes 360 degrees. It goes all the way around and it keeps going all the way around. I used to have that phone, that Motorola phone that would, that would twist open instead of flipping open. So I was able to flip it around with one hand and, and talk on my ancient Motorola phone and uh, I was showing it to friends and somebody twists it all the way around and they go, oh, it goes all the way around. And a friend of mine went, it does now. I love that joke. It's just a subtle. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's no way that she costs $100. It was like 98. Uh, <laughs> uh. Hey, thank you guys for the follows. I appreciate you guys following my channel. But it is deeply insulting to me. No, it's not. Uh, anyway, uh, so <laughs> deeply, deeply insulting. Connect up to 28 input devices wirelessly to SimuCube force feedback controller. This one only does 28? Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> I guess 28 of these, I guess. But, but okay, so what this thing does um, is it allows that wheel to go all the way around because it's connected to a servo. It's not actually connected to a car. Uh, it's a clever thing that they've done, and they've done it with Bluetooth low energy, which means you, you do need to have a battery in the wheel itself, but you can get all these cool F1 racing wheels and plug them into your expensive controller and use it. Pretty cool. How many bits do you need? This isn't the rotational position sensor. This is not that. No, no, no. This, so the SimiCube force feedback controller, that board over there, that's connected to the base. That's connected to the base, connected to the servo for the wheel. Now, Granite Devices took all this stuff and they went, ugh, and they made their own closed system that has its own servo, its own controller, blah, blah, blah. The SimuCube, which is their universal motor controller coupled with a microcontroller that's capable of pretending like it's a force feedback steering wheel, um, is good for us because then we can buy a wheel off of eBay, and that's what we did. We bought a Mitsubishi Mel servo off of eBay, and I connected it to all this stuff, so it's two separate things. Um, the buttons we did through the LIN bus, the buttons we did through the LIN bus, which is the language that the steering wheel spoke, and it speaks that language under the assumption that it's going to be connected by wires. And so we connected those all to this microcontroller here. And what this microcontroller does is it goes, oh, I see you're trying to hit these buttons. And so what it does is it actually physically flips the buttons using a port expander. I've got two, um, digital potentiometers. Woo. All right. Hello, brain. How you doing? Uh, two digital potentiometers. They're two, uh, two potentiometer devices. It's four. Four digital potentiometers hooked up to the ancient simulator uh, system of having Ethernet cables with buttons on the end. Uh, and then I've got a port expander hooked up to the rest of the pins. So technically, I mean, the, the configuration for these is pretty complicated. There's like a bunch of different stuff that they can do. But in boiled down, what it essentially is is just a button to ground. And so all we do is we just flip a button to ground on these, these guys here. That works, but I've only got so many buttons. There's only so many pins on this thing. It would be much better if I could just have this controller digitally communicate to the microcontroller in here and go, hey, buddy, we got a bunch of these pins pressed down. So unfortunately, I cannot do that. So that's why we're reverse engineering this thing, so that I can have the ability to communicate with more buttons because we already have a system to get all of the data from the, like, 14 to 15. What is it? Uh, how many buttons are on this thing? 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 15 buttons on this thing. 15 buttons. 15 bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. Uh, yeah, so we've got all that stuff ready to go. If I can figure out, if I can speak of the language of this thing, then we can... Uh, we can get all the buttons working, and that way I can do a seven-speed shifter without too much trouble and get all of my steering wheel buttons mapped. 
means I could have a piss key in uh, my summer car. That'd be fun. <laughs> Maybe the hang up phone button is the piss button. Gotta have a piss button. All right, so they got a data sheet for it. I'm going to guess that they're not using any kind of a, they're not going to tell us how to communicate with it. They're just going to tell us how to connect to it. Yeah, see, it's, it's, this is, this is their closed system. It's got the power supply and everything in it. I don't know how much torque that thing can do, but our, our wheel does more. Bluetooth low energy, blah, 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 button, play, blah, 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 consume a frugal amount of energy. <laughs> Ah, I love translating stuff. So, uh, I guess they're, they want you to put a big battery in it. You turn it on by simply connecting an appropriate power supply to them. After power on, a module enters a discovery mode and announces itself to the SimuCube's controller wireless adapter for 30 seconds. Alright. Discovery mode can also be activated by pressing both paddle shifters simultaneously. Huh. Alright. Well, I don't know if we need all that stuff. Uh... Is the Granite Devices controller always listening for one of these things? So it does sound it does sound more complicated than just a port expander with a, a thing in the middle. Uh, there's more going on here. So we're we have more to reverse engineer, unfortunately. This is gonna be a little bit more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. We need to uh, have a, like a structure of packets and probably a back and forth. Oh yeah, you had that interview. Nice. Glad it went well. Are they gonna now just like ghost you? They're just going to vanish. Poof, in the dust. No, it's all right. I have to take, I have to sip water every now and then. Um, all right, so the port expander is not all that's there. It, it, they're based, they program the module to, to communicate with the port expander and give it the status of all of the registers, but it's doing more complicated things. Uh, it's reporting back. I thought there might be like a, a special pin that could do like analog sensing and then they could somehow have that device because there's like battery status on this so i thought maybe one of the pins would be analog and do battery status boy that would be convenient if i could send analog signals into this well let's uh what, what's the pin out on this thing so there are okay there are encoders and buttons and that's it paddle two paddle one button 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 Paddle, button, button, button. Okay. So it, it can have a, like an encoder if you want to put uh, like mode selection on the thing, or you could just send it in as all buttons. This is a, this is a Granite Devices, Simu Cube, and otherwise wireless wheel system. They do have a more advanced wireless wheel module, but they're not, they're not selling it right now. Well, why, why? Hold on. Gotta get into this comment. Urgh, I have to teach chat things about engineering. Chat! I'm pulling my hair out. Feel like it would be easier to just get three Bluetooth low energy ESPs, have two clients, one steering, one shifting, one host computer interface, and just have them send as stream bytes over Bluetooth, then if there's not enough inputs on the ESP for buttons, then use an IO expander. What? Well, okay, so here's the deal. Oh, I always have to justify everything that I'm doing all at once. <laughs> yeah, why not just make the whole protocol on its own? Some games don't like to have multiple joysticks plugged in, and I've never really run into them yet, but uh, we would have to deal with that. It would be easier for me to make um, this device here just like I could put a USB hub in it, and then I could have one piece of the USB hub go to the, the uh, Granite Devices controller. And then the other piece of the USB hub would be a, like the Arduino Pro, uh, whatever. Yes, sorry, the um, Teensy 3.2 that I have here. That could just be a, a Bluetooth joystick. And that is as easy as choosing a pull-down menu from, uh, you know, the, from uh, the ESP software. And that, that would be very easy, and I have debated about whether or not I want to do that. Have all the buttons on a separate joystick. But from what I hear, every now and then you run into a program that doesn't like multiple joysticks to be plugged in. It's just it's just the way force feedback stuff is, right? So I could do that, and it would be easier and it would be cheaper. What I want to do is figure out how this thing works, because then 
I can pretend to be it and send it inputs from the system that we already have communicating with everything. When I built the wheel, we looked at that steering wheel and I said, wow, there's a lot of really nice electronics in this steering wheel. I thought I would have to put a controller in there and do something, right? So, you know, yeah, you could have each individual piece of your system have its own wireless protocol, but you'd have to have batteries and everything. I'd have to recharge all of my gear. I don't want to do that. I already have enough, like, I'm already surrounded by lithium ion cells ready to kill me. I don't want to do that. Star Citizen is playable. It's most of a demo, uh, but it's there. You can you can play it. Yeah, and I, the Star Citizen joysticks are sitting under the brewing table over there, and I do want to get back to them. Um, is any of this stuff going to help me with that? Probably not. Um, I know what I need to do. I, I think I think getting that protocol from the pedals. I mean, the pedals use what is ostensibly an, an AT Tiny 85, so I could just throw my own in there if I want to. I don't know. I don't know where to go with that, because I think we could reverse engineer that protocol again and get it right. But uh, anyway. No. No, I don't. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't need that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I guess I do want that, actually. I do want that, because I want to figure out how to light the wheel up. I need to figure out what that packet looks like so that this can communicate back to it. I'm doing a bit of a bit banging thing with um with getting all of the signals into my device. You've already seen this. Yeah, I think I've already seen this. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I need this. I think we already looked at this. We've already fully reverse engineered the wheel. All of my system works. The reason that I went with Linbus is because the steering wheel spoke Linbus. That's the language that it spake. So I decided instead of going through all the trouble of engineering a new controller in the steering wheel and figuring out how I'm going to get a serial packet back to my controller, I would just use this because uh, Linbus is known. We know what it's doing. We know how it's talking and we, we brute forced our way to finding what that signal was in order to get the status of all the things. And it turns out the steering wheel spits back the version number of the steering wheel and a bunch of ones and zeros that represent whether or not a button is hit. It was that simple. So in that vein, I would like to continue to use the LIN bus. And so what I'll be doing with the pedals is, well, basically just plugging them in to, um, to the, the, the pedal thing that we already invented that speaks LIN bus. Yeah, I'd already speak it in English. So in that sense, we don't have to do, we, you know, I don't have to go heavy into the LIN bus uh, at this point. We already know everything about LIN bus. I thought this might have some extra specification stuff in it about like the identity of packets to control uh, uh, steering wheel lights. That's all I'm interested in at this point with the LIN bus. I want to know, I want to know what, what I need to tell it in order to run the steering wheel lights. Table of valid frame identifiers. Ooh, I remember all this stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, we need to get into this thing. And we need to, well, we need to basically get this thing functioning, not this thing, this thing. We need to get functioning. And then we need to sit on the, the uh, digital line. We don't need to sit on the wireless. I don't, I'm not going to sniff Bluetooth packets. That's perverse. And I'm not going to get it. I think that's against Twitch Toss. No, we're going we're gonna to sit here and we are going to sniff the farts of our serial line that is communicating to the base station. Because that's where we're going to pretend that our farts are their farts. So I'm not, I'm not going to grow silicon wafers and slice them and then etch them into an actual controller that resembles this thing. I am not going to invent this thing from the ground up. I'm not gonna change the entire methodology behind my uh, steering wheel system because it exists and I did it and it's done. I wanna add the functionality of this thing to the microcontroller. Why am I doing it this way? I just explained. <laughs> That's all I got for you. All right. I don't know. It's I always and I, I you know, I shouldn't I shouldn't give them too much credit when people try to do that, but they're not there. They're not paying attention for the entire discovery phase of the project. While, because that's, that's what we do a lot on Tuesdays, right? Tuesdays, we kind of have a discovery phase of the projects that I'm working on, because I'll have some 
inane, stupid, inebriated, weird idea that I pull out of the ether, and then we need to put that idea actually into the systems that we're using, and that's when we discover that it was fucking inane and stupid. Uh, and oftentimes, chat gets a nice little feather in their cap for that. Uh, sometimes I'm right, though. So that's kind of how things go around here. A lot of the times, Tuesday, we discover what parts I need to order or, or whether or not I'm stupid. Uh, so in this case, we are reverse engineering this from the best spot. It just happened to cost me $100. I'm mad about having to spend $100, though. That was a drunken purchase, by the way. Um, yeah, and, and the complexity of the system, you're right. The complexity of the system does keep people from being sort of on the up and up and of all the decisions that we've made along the way. All the friends, all the friends, each decision is a friend, a friend that we've made along the way. A friend, friend, all right. Friend, friend decisions. <sighs> We're doing the same thing with Bluetooth being against us? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are between low energy and regular energy Bluetooth. Okay, so looking at the operational logic here gives me a clue. It tells me that basically it's not as simple as I thought it would be. I thought it would just be whatever serial language this thing is speaking, communicating with everything else. But no, there's, there's more to it than that. Um, I have a feeling that if we look at the battery connection, which are these two weirdly positioned... Man, I really wish they just gave us the code for this, you know? Gave us the code for this little... I'm guessing the BGM-11A2 is going to have um, program memory space on it. I don't really do digital reverse engineering. I do physical reverse engineering. How many layers is this board? Is this only two layers? I hope it's only two layers. Yeah, it's two layers. All right, so that looks like ground. Oh, I see. So we've got a big plane going across here. All the way over to... Oh, that again. Wait a minute. BTX1, BTX2, but they look connected. Look, BTX1 is blatantly going into ground. BTX2 is also blatantly going into ground. And that ground plane is continuous, as far as I can tell. Yeah. yeah I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> if your neighbor's pacemaker speeds up when pressing the pedal, you're doing it wrong. Uh... Groovy has described to me the process of getting a pacemaker uh, firmware update, and it is you, you literally are dying until the update is done. That is fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. Pacemaker stuff is fucked up. Crazy. Yeah. I, yes, corner holes just not mounting. Yeah. Is it an only Bluetooth module? Let's look that up. Yeah, it's a it's a fucking yikes for sure. You would think it would have like a like a firmware loader. X-ray with the leads in the chambers is freaky. Yeah. Man, I wish I I wish I had an X-ray here, but I don't really feel like radiating myself more. <laughs> I don't feel like getting more radiation in my body. All right, Havian, back, back off, back off. You can read ahead, but keep it to yourself. I'm going to work slow. You're going to be frustrated with me. I can already tell. <laughs> You're one of those read ahead people. It's not helping. It's, it's pulling the carpet out from under me. I appreciate it, though. Uh, BGM-111A256, V2. I can't remember all that stuff at once. Hold on. BGM 111A256. Those are interesting numbers. BGM A211. No. 111. 256. Version 2. Why do I get nothing? Are we still on verbose or whatever? Verbatim? I don't... Google didn't... Used to give me nothing. <laughs> What's going on on that? Failing a firmware update could, could literally not be any more nerve-wracking than that. 
Yeah, the uh, medical medical stuff like that is totally it's a totally different animal because you can have scenarios like that. I just don't understand why the pacemaker doesn't have a system by which you would load the stuff in and have the pacemaker itself go, mm, yeah, that's good, and then not skip a beat and just go poop and then update. But it's an older system, I guess. Because, you know, it's in somebody's body. It's going to be there a while. <sighs> Bugma. What did I do wrong here? Oh, BGM. There's no A. Um, and I, again, one of the things that I like to do is show this process of actually refining Google results in order to find the thing that we're looking for the data sheet for, because this is an important part of doing this kind of stuff. If you're reverse engineering something, your first uh, task is going to be figuring out what's there. Everything is a data sheet, usually, unless you're dealing with some real obscure stuff. Everything typically is a data sheet, right? And the data sheet tells you exactly how to use that device. It is a sales tool so that companies will buy the products and put them on their circuit boards. So there's not, it's, we're just talking about in general, just like uh, updating firmware and stuff like that. I just brought it up as an example of a very extreme firmware update. Uh, BGM 11. I'm, I'm going, I'm, stop. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going to mute you if you do it again. Sit on your hands. Sit on your hands and watch. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. PGM 111A256, which is what I was just about to do. But then I, but then the commenter puts it in there first, huh? Anyway, I flipped the A around because that's the way my my brain works. All right, <clears throat> pervert. Uh, PGM one eleven A two fifty six version two Silicon Labs RF -if and RFID or F -if? What is RF -if? Yeah, people people like. Okay, what? Where should I move the mouse now, chat? Like. <laughs> God damn it! All right, sorry. It gets under my skin. Um, I don't. I don't mean to be mean to you. Uh, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. All right, let's get a data sheet. Let's get a data sheet. BGM 111. Bluetooth guide or just BGM 111. I kind of want to look at just BGM 111. The wireless gecko. Ooh, that's a cool name. BGM 111 is a Bluetooth module targeted for Bluetooth. The Bluetooth module is targeted for Bluetooth. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we made the Bluetooth module for Bluetooth stuff. We did, we did the blue, we made the Bluetooth for Bluetooth people. Yeah. Anyway, low energy applications were reliable RF low power consumption and easy application development are key requirements. Who writes this stuff? <laughs> Plus 8 DBM TX power BGM 111 is ideal for applications requiring short and medium range Bluetooth connectivity. Yeah, microwaves are 2.4, right? What are we what are we speaking? Bluetooth LE is 2.4, isn't it? So yeah, you're not you're not going to have a good time if you run your microwave alongside of this thing. The sub did out sub, so I in subbed. Hey, thank you for the sub. 4 months. Hell yeah. Dude, I could have eaten a sub today. I All I've eaten today is a bunch of uh, chocolate-covered espresso beans just to try to wake myself up, try to shock myself into being awake with adrenaline. Bluetooth 4.2 integrated antenna, blah, 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 blah. Why is the... Okay, sorry. Mouse is just moving weird. Um, Up to 92, range of 200 meters. You could be really far away from your uh, steering wheel, apparently. 200 meters, like, in a vacuum. In the vacuum of space with line of sight, you can go 200 meters, maybe. If if you are in such a vacuum of space that other radio frequencies aren't present, there's literally nothing to reflect off of. 200 meters is ridiculous. There, you're no way. These claims are always such shit. <laughs> They're so bad. It's like, if, if you were equations on a piece of paper, you could get 200 meters. Anyway, 32-bit cortex. Jesus Christ. All right. 
autonomous hardware crypto accelerator and a random number generator. There's a lot of stuff in here, man. Breakfast of champs. Yeah, I know. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so got a lot of features in here. I had selection of microcontroller peripherals. I have I have this weird feeling that we are going. It's it's not it's not just a go between for the TX and RX. But there's a lot more going on in this thing. Because, like, this is a microcontroller data sheet. This is a big data sheet. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Port IO configuration, digital peripheral, letter, timer, PC int, USART, all the stuff going to the port mapper. And then you got all these things coming out of the outside there. Actually, you got a lot of stuff over here. Okay. All right. All right, so we gotta we gotta pretend we're one of these things, huh? I don't think we need to look at the data sheet level on this thing at the moment. Oh dear God, what is happening there? Uh, <laughs> my headset probably makes it forty feet at best. Yeah, Bluetooth long range stuff I've actually seen works as the motorcycle Bluetooth intercoms, but it's almost never a hundred meters. Yeah, the the real world really like those numbers are on a on paper. On paper, it reaches that distance. You're never going to get anywhere near that. And you can calculate uh, based on what terrain you're going to be in, what your exact like RF distance is, but you need to like, you need to like measure the internal oscillator. You need to, well, not really the internal oscillator. You can detect the internal oscillator outside of the thing, but you need to measure like the strength of the signal and stuff. And if you're really going to do it, like what's, where's it reflecting off of? And oh God, it's a pain in the ass. But you can actually figure out, uh, based on your terrain, what theoretical distance you can get from that radio. Uh, but it depends on, it also depends on its height above the ground, and it's wild. It's, it's wild. Uh, those numbers are, are just crack pipe numbers. They're ridiculous. Um, 200, 200 meters, my ass. Maybe in a metal tube, you'll get 200 meters. Okay, um, I'm just looking for information about this, like, like what this thing is doing, how it's communicating. I don't know, do we have an application? Probably not. There's some stuff about the emissions pattern. Pretty cool. This is a big data sheet, though. This is a big, big data sheet. Ooh. Bussy. Look at that. Look at that. Electronics bussy. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if there is a data sheet somewhere that, that's bank B, U.S., uh, system Y. <laughs> the bussy. Do, do, do. There it is. We found it. We did it. We did it, chat. We did it, Reddit. There's the bus. Bus A, Y. Bussy. Let's find bus A Y. Is that up here? Oh yeah. There it is. There it is. We did it. We found it. There it is. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that's, I, I don't know. I'm just looking at the ports and stuff. I don't, I don't think this is very simply a, an in-between for the serial line. Oh, God. Uh, the reverse engineering this stuff takes so much knowledge. Um, I think what we can do is we can listen in and take a look at the packets, and then when we get down to the packets, we'll find whatever information we need off of this thing, and then we can pretend that we are it. Uh, I, I feel like they're, they're plugging stuff into this, like they're programming this, because, I mean... We've got programming pins on the on the other side of this thing. So if we can keep our eyes on the task here, yeah, that's what they're using. TXRX, reset ground, etc. Um, all that stuff in order to pump code into this right here. So what they'll do is they'll have a, a setup where there are pogo pins uh, on those pads, and you'll plug this module into that and they'll program it up. And then oftentimes what they'll do is they'll build a little peripheral so that uh, somebody who who's checking on the boards to plug it in and runs through a check sequence to make sure everything's properly assembled. But what's the other IC on the board? Port expander. Very simple Texas Instruments port expander, which I got hopeful about. I thought that this port, that this, this Bluetooth, what's it right here, 
would be just like one of those TXRX kind of Bluetoothy kind of modules that you just buy and put into something and then it just nah, but it's not it's not that simple. This thing is also getting battery information and all kinds of other stuff. And this is just a this is just for the buttons, just for the 28-ish buttons plugging into that. So unfortunately, we're not pretending to be this. We're pretending to be the much more complicated RF module. All right. All right. We know what we're up against. This thing is sucks. 90 page data sheet looking ass motherfucker. All right. We're not going to worry about that though. Um, I'm, I want to keep reading. I want to keep reading this and just make sure, you know, what I need to do in order to get this system working and then we'll plug ourselves into it and we can get data out of it. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is going on here is that, um, Granite Devices has programmed two modules. So the two modules are the receiver and the transmitter. And the receiver is literally just that Bluetooth chip with, with a little pin thing on it. And so this Bluetooth chip is speaking serial to their microcontroller. But they've programmed this with special sauce in it that we need to extract. Because this will be sending serial data to the microcontroller in packet form that'll, that'll inform it of, I have this module, this serial number, these are the buttons that are pressed, here's the battery life status. So... The receiver is a slightly different chip, I think. Nope, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so basically what you do is you go, I would like a bushel of these chips. I'd like an entire bussy of these chips. Um, and just once I get that bussy, I'll just put these two chips into one another and they'll, they'll do all their Bluetooth communications. I need it. I need. I need pussy on stream. I need it on stream. Sorry. I'm sorry, chat. I'm doing this for me, not you. Uh, where the hell? My God, this is a not small data sheet. Uh, hard to find pussy sometimes. Oh wait, those are the diagrams that I was looking for. Generic I2C device connected to I2C. Mini simplicity debug connector. Hmm. Now, if I I'm not I'm not huge on re reverse engineering software. I really don't want to do it. It requires uh, quite a weird beard. You need to be a you need to be a real weirdo. I have a friend who does it. Um, you can have a program that goes through like a hex dump and sort of arranges stuff properly but man I, I you need to go all the way down to the silicon sometimes on stuff like that and i, I don't want to do it i don't want to do it i don't want to do it on stream it's not going to be an entertaining stream etc cetera, etc cetera. so um you know these little programming plugins like i, I don't know we're not going to do that <laughs> we're not going to do that i'm not going to try to ask for its software back usually there's like a bit you can set on the on the code and say ah this is locked now so anyway, the examples I just wanted to look at, um, I mean, this thing has full pinouts, right? Full uh, ins and outs on it, like a microcontroller. And that's probably what they're doing. I mean, it's got analog and digital out ins and outs. Yeah, they're just doing that. And they're probably connected with SPI. Uh, but anyway, uh, scrolling down, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. we got to find that bussy. Where is that? It's all the way down here. Yeah, it's in our memory, huh? There it is. There it is. Damn it! <laughs> Where are we? Ah, we're back at the circuit. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're here. There it is. We'll just keep that on screen. All right. So you guys were wondering what I was on about. Why I, I seem like I have a brain injury. Uh, yeah. Anyway. All right. Bop 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 bop. Back to reading this. What is this thing doing? Keep the paddle shifters pressed, it'll go in discovery mode. Um, what does that mean for the controller itself? What I'm trying to ascertain by actually reading the documentation for once is whether or not, um, like, so can we, can our microcontroller just tell it that it's got a new peripheral or do we need to do it at the very beginning? Does there need to be a specific sequence of events for us to come up onto this bus or is it just always bussy? I mean, is it always just like accepting 
clients because the Bluetooth, you know, you got to tell the thing to look and then you got to tell the other thing to look and then they, they look, right? Anyway. So that's what the, you press both paddle shifters and the wheel goes into discovery mode. What is the base station doing? Required you to manually select the wireless button place module from the list provided by SimuCube configuration software. What? Oh, that's if you have a specific like button mod, because they, they sell these as button modules for your simulator setup. So you've got all these wireless things sitting around. Um, we don't have that. We, we have, I mean, this is technically, you know, button module, but it's not, yeah. The button plate module is what I, what I meant to say. See, so yeah, we don't have that. Uh, connection will be established automatically when pressing both the paddle shifters simultaneously. After establishing a connection, all input events coming from the button plate module will be transmitted to SimuCube's controller's wireless adapter. Now, here's the thing. Is there a one-time message that I'm going to need to emulate that'll tell it, hey, I'm this, or I'm I'm new one of these, because uh, I will not remember that. <laughs> We're not, we're not actually making the wireless button module. We are actually Mr. Leaky, man. What are you talking? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that laser did leak. I need to put silicon on that. I'm letting it dry. It was a pinhole uh, leak from where I wasn't able to wipe my finger all the way around the seal. Of course. Well, I predicted it, and exactly what I predicted happened. So, points for me, I guess. But, yeah, I'll, I'll get that done, and on Thursday we'll have, we'll have the full stress test. Yeah, I have two. No, I didn't do thicker walls. I have two new ones um, that are 100% infill, and those should be fine. Uh, those will. I didn't need thicker walls. Uh, we'll be able to see whether or not the 3D print leaks, but uh, I don't think it will. Anyway, back to back to my bussy or Busby. Busby Berkeley. All right, back over to here. Connection established when pressing both paddle shifters simultaneously. So here's the deal. Like, you got to register your button panel with the controller. And then when you power it up again, it'll automatically know what it is or when you press both things. So there might be, like, a serial number involved in here. Um, and it might be a one-time thing. So if I sit here without observing it and I want to connect it, I might just miss that packet. And I guess, I guess maybe I could re-register it with the software. I hope it's not like, ah, oh, it's permanently registered. That would be very bad. Controls wireless adapter. The connection between a wireless button plate and the SimuCube controller can be closed by pressing... Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so using the paddle buttons, I can close the connection once I establish it. After closing the connection this way, the button plate module waits five seconds before it can be set to discovery again. Well, they're not talking about doing anything in the software. It seems like it enters discovery mode and the SimuCube just finds it. So it might be outputting serial to the module that puts it in discovery mode. How does, how did, how does this module, how does my bussy work with discovery mode? It doesn't say a damn thing. We live in a society doesn't this say a lot about society where, oh God, I got the wrong, damn it. Man, that would have been clippable too. Anyway, we live in a society. How come these days kids have, have more bussy 11 instances than they do discovery? That says a lot about society. <laughs> no discovery. An 11 bussy. That's a shame. That's a crying shame. <laughs> a little bit of Busby, too. All right. So, um, what we have learned is that my back is starting to cramp. God damn it. Hold on. Mm, diabetes. Okay. I'm going to try to keep my back from tensing up. I got to change the positions that I'm sitting in these uh, 1960s stools. So, um, yeah, it's an awkward angle when I look down and read stuff on the screen. I should probably like look up like this and read it like this. Yeah, I'll do that. 
All right. Um, what we've learned from reading this is that there's a there's kind of a protocol in effect here, right? There's a little bit of a little bit of a back and forth going on. What happens is um, the Granite Devices controller is always looking for a new Bluetooth low energy device, supposedly, um, or it maybe it has like a trigger thing that that happens. But what we can do is in order to establish a connection, we hold both of the paddle buttons down. Now the, it doesn't actually have paddles; it's just two buttons. They just call them the paddle buttons where on a regular steering wheel, you would, you would have the paddle buttons connected that way, whatever. Anyway, both paddle buttons pressed down at the same time tells the controller, hey, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a buddy. Who am I communicating with? And so the Granite Devices base station is always looking for that buddy. Now, whether or not it's sending a protocol to the module to tell it to be in discovery mode or whether the module is just working as a dumb in-between between the two things, Something's going to happen there, and we'll be able to see by, by observing that protocol. We'll be able to see how that's initiated. Because it's, it's weird to me that the, the base station is always looking for discoverable stuff. I thought you might boot it up, and then within the first 30 seconds it would do it. Because that's what the wheel does. The wheel looks for 30 seconds after you press both paddles. And then to unregister, you hold down the paddles again, and it will unregister itself. So we're going to be doing that over and over again. We're going to have to do that a bunch of times, because I'm going to make up my own pretend device that's going to connect to the base station. Right? <laughs> a wide bike seat on wheels? Oh god. No. No, I never did unicycle. <laughs> I don't want that. No, these are I mean these are just wooden stools. They're from my grandfather's shop. They used to be from my grandfather's bar, apparently. Super comfy for a long time work. I don't want to be comfortable. I need to be on edge. You never know when a hardware problem will will spark up. All right, uh, let's see. So button plate module, blah, blah, blah. Wireless button plate module will enter sleep mode if it's not connected to a SimuCube controller. That is just saying literally nothing. That That is nothing. Yeah, you know, hey, uh, listen, streamers are stubborn people. <laughs> you should know. Streamers are very stubborn people in general. I'll send streamers a message and they just won't reply. I'm like, it's just too, too busy too, you know, not even busy. Just, just too, too much social anxiety. Uh, <laughs> so we've got an led that's going to tell us what's happening. That's good. Yeah. It's gotta be the sleep mode, the low, low quiescent. I don't know how to say that. Um, low quiescent. The low current draw of being in sleep mode is probably how they get all that. And I guess I guess you have to wake up the steering wheel for each use by doing the thing. I got yelled at by a streamer for trying to help with my summer car last night. Eh, it's tough. It's tough. I know. I try not to get too angry about that. But if you think about it from my end, all the all the back seating that goes on. <laughs> I, li I like my stools. I'm going to keep them. <laughs> Wireless button plate logic modules, 28 pins for input devices. I'm wondering if... We, if I wonder. I, I would be very... Quiescent. Quiescent. Okay, got it. Quiescent. Quiescent. It's pronounced bussy. All right. So anyway, it is a very low bussy current, and uh, that allows it to work for a long time because it goes to sleep. My my, there's one muscle on the right side of my back that's trying to fold me into a pretzel right now. They were complaining the Ferndale can't shift into specific gears. Oh, does it actually do that? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know it did that. So it actually does do a little bit of a micro, or sorry, a little bit of motorcycle gearing. I didn't know you could double tap to get it into neutral. <laughs> Bossy. <laughs> da baby. What? Uh, have, those memes are so weird. The zoomers went through a real sort of, uh, a real sort of, uh, what is it? Oh man, uh, words aren't working properly. Hey, Code Rush, thank you for rating with a party of five. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we've been looking at my bussy today. There it is. Mm, I got two bussies. Here, I can get two of them on camera at once. 
Oh no, my bussy's gone. Yeah, there's one in there. And there's one in there. Isn't that neat? Anyway, uh, <laughs> what we're doing is we're looking at uh, some simulator stuff. My uh, my laser leaked. My laser leaked all over the place. That was that was a foregone conclusion. It leaked in exactly the way I thought it did. The same way as if you're talking anything. Today's like dirty. Today has a lot of dirty language in it. Um, when you apply caulk to something, it's not really going to seal it unless you put a little pressure on it. And so to put a little pressure on it, you wet your finger and you just rub it across, right? Um, but the place where I, my finger lost contact with the edge of the laser diode module is exactly where it leaked. That's a, always happens like that. So now that I know that, I'm going to apply a little bit to the, uh, the laser module. And then on Thursday, hopefully, we can actually get it running uh, with the pump and see everything work. But uh, in the meantime, I've got a lot of other got a lot of other projects going on here. And what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to take my steering wheel, my giant force fa force fact back, force feedback, actual industrial two horsepower servo, real car wheel and peripherals simulator setup that runs on this thing over here, the Granite Devices SimuCube. What we're trying to do is we're trying to hook it up to a wireless wheel module. Yeah, horse feedback. Horse feedback. It says no a lot. Um, trying to hook it up to the wireless wheel module, and I'm angry. I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry because I had to spend $100 on this, on these two little circuit boards. So these two little circuit boards are the wireless wheel module. What Granite Devices wants you to do is it wants you to have a bunch of different steering wheels that plug into their uh, control setup, right? And so you can have just the steering wheel, and it's it's a it's its own it's its own peripheral, it's its own thing, right? And it it allows the Granite Devices controller to push a bunch of buttons in software. Um, so you get your wheel, uh, you recharge your wheel, and then you unplug it, and you push both paddles, and then it syncs up with the computer. And now you can push all those buttons and do the knobs and pretend like you're a real F1 driver while the servo tries to break your arms off. Um, however, I don't need that. We already have our digital protocol worked out. We already have this communicating with this microcontroller right here and sort of pseudo physically pressing the buttons. There are only so many buttons moving into this thing. The wireless wheel module unlocks more buttons. So if I can get this thing to speak digital to here, to the controller, then this is pointless. Uh, it still is a point, but still. If I can reverse engineer this protocol and get my microcontroller to appreciably, to, to reasonably emulate that serial protocol, then I can have a little part of the code that just outputs the packet and we're done. But we need to, we need to walk the walk. We need to do a little dance. So what it's going to have to do, this is going to have to, maybe not every time, there will probably be like a, a connect or a, you know, I, you could probably use it in Red Dead Redemption. You probably could control the horse of the steering wheel. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe GTA. I don't know. Um, so what I what I need to do is I need to figure out how this thing initially connects and communicates, and then I need to figure out how it reconnects, so that we can make our microcontroller do that. I don't need to do the disconnect protocol, but I mean, you know, maybe it'll be there. It depends. God, this is complicated. I really wish Granite Devices just published their their API so that we would be able to get a signal into the thing. And watch, now that I've spent $100, they're going to, like, release it tomorrow. I mean, we've had, we, so we've had people in chat from Granite Devices, supposedly. And I, reasonable enough, they had Scandinavian names. <laughs> That's really all it takes to, to, to fake being, being part of the company that makes the, the controller. But uh, they, they seemed reasonably to be somebody from that company. And they were talking about how their, their intentions to actually do, like, a protocol um, could you legally release the protocol to the public? I don't know. I don't know. All I'm doing is putting ones and zeros around. That should be, that shouldn't be illegal. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I could, I could publish my findings. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily be very happy with me, but we're obviously going to go through the process on stream over the next week or seven. So. Pussy. All right, uh, going back to here. So yeah, I want to finish reading the documentation and then we're going to connect this thing and see what it does. 
The wireless button plate logic modules, 28 pins for devices. First two pins are fixed, must be connected to the paddle shifters. So we're, yeah, it's a, for some reason, that's how it, that's how it does its thing. Uh, every sim wheel based on this wireless button plate module must have two paddle shifters connected to these pins because they're used for putting the module in discovery mode. I, hold on, let me just, I'm going to just jump ahead on this data sheet here real quick. Is there any mention of recommendation about placing devices to pins? Yeah, they got a reference board. That looks like more than 28. How to do the thing. Yeah, there's no... They don't mention the protocol. Unbelievably little amount of energy. <laughs> In the sleep mode is below 100 nano amps. That is a very small amount of energy. Battery power switch off during the sleep mode. The capacitors on the board have enough energy for running sleep mode up to a minute. Just the... What? Just these little guys? Up to a minute on that. That is madness. My finger is this big. <laughs> right? This is a very small little board. You know, kind of, it, it always bugs me when you catch somebody saying small little. Yeah, anyway, this is a very tiny board. You got that cap right there on the power and ground. That can power this for up to a minute. Why does it look scorched? Uh, they decided to do the matte uh, silk screen, I guess. And that's just how the matte silk screen looks. Good look. Looks good. I like it. Um, okay, so. The battery switched on before the energy in the capacitor is con consumed. The module stays in the sleep mode and therefore doesn't enter discovery mode automatically. Discovery mode can be entered normally by pressing both... Sh so both paddle shifters seem to be like a... Discovery mode seems to be kind of important, huh? Is that a problem? Why would it... Hmm. Status LED stops blinking if the discovery mode is continued for over 50 seconds, pressing the paddle shifters. Button plate module stays normally in discovery mode, but the LED doesn't blink. What? <laughs> That's like... Go in and fix your code. What the hell? <laughs> a weird bug. Scan and list nearby. Okay, okay, so there's a scanning protocol that we enter. All right, that changes things a little bit. So we'll need to recognize the scanning mode and respond to it. Anytime we get scanning mode, we need to respond with that. And then there's going to be a handshake, maybe. And it, do you have to... I don't think you have to discover it every time, right? A configuration tool will be provided for sim wheel manufacturers for configuring the wheel button plate module. Damn it! I want that scanning tool. Or whatever it is, the configuration tool. Darn it. Huh. When connecting a wireless sim wheel to a SimuCube controller, SimuCube reads this configuration and uses it for interpreting the signal from the button plate. Every wireless button plate module must be configured with this tool before use. I'm gonna I'm going to assume that's where they get the serial number from, huh? Oh, the seal of approval? Oh, is that what you're talking about? Oh, 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 sorry. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. This is no, this is just a mark to say that it's been programmed. Yeah, people will do this uh in electronics. Basically you have you have a desk full of these things and a little programming module uh, you want to put a mark in there to say that you've put software onto the onto the device. That's all that is. Um, sometimes it's a quality check, but in this case, I believe it's it's whoever, you know, whoever's manufacturing this board just needed to mark something on the desk. Yeah, and they just didn't wipe it off. You got to do that when you have like 500 devices on your desk. Uh, configuration, so the, the, there's a tool that lets you set all of the parameters of the things that you're... Uh, we don't have access to any of that. Configuration tool consists of a custom Bluetooth USB hardware device as well as the software application. Ah. Shown in figure 10. Ah, oh, I wish I had that. SimuCube wireless button plate configuration tool. Ah, 
I'm going to guess that there's not just like a download somewhere, huh? Yeah, I'm going to guess there's not. Oh, it's definitely not going to be here, but we'll just check. Manual, manual, warranty. <laughs> Wiki page, that's what we want. Sorry. Uh, software. Granity, simple motion. DC, GD. Firmware. Okay. DC. VSD. I've never heard of this. Oh, neat. That's just a different configuration for motor stuff. So GD is probably the same. Yeah, that's not. We've used this software before, actually. All right. So there, yeah, they, they probably have a special download for the other one, huh? True drive. What is all this? It is. SimuCube firmware. We don't, we don't get to configure our own Bluetooth module. You have to be an actual producer to get that. All right. <laughs> We're stuck here outside of the party. You got to figure out what's going on in there. That's not what I'm looking for. Do, 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 do. All right. So. Where were we? <laughs> we were reading stuff. We were using our brains. I lost the page. What happened to the... Did I... Oh, no, here it is. Jesus. All right. <laughs> so we can't do any of this. Scan, establish connection, load and save, test functionality, read and write, or read the battery voltage. But we can't do that with... I mean, the, the Simu cube will allow us to get into the configuration, so I don't know what that's all about. We don't. We just don't get their special piece of hardware in order to do all that communication. Which, man, that would that would simplify things. Our special piece of hardware is just the controller itself. All right. So I know I'm reading backwards through it now, but that's just whatever. <laughs> uh huh. Ten millimeters. Yeah. That that plug I've installed on devices before. Okay. All right, so we, yeah, there's all our buttons. Those are, those are our connections. So we just need to put a battery on this thing, a battery. So we'll put the power supply on this. Um, I need the battery, I need the two paddle buttons, uh, and then we need to run the serial connection out of the box. So we'll set this up. How am I gonna do that? I don't think we need to set it up temporarily. I think I can just solder wires to the thing and have it run to, you know, something that I can control. Button plate logic module, thing to ground, got it. Oh, uh, we don't, we'll not do, we'll just give it three volts. So it's a three volt device. I don't do rotary encoders. And then, oh, there's, a, is there no status LED installed? Status LED is here. Uh, I mean like, wasn't one of these called out as an LED? Yeah, there's no LED installed. Can I install a surface mount LED somewhere? I always just put it between those two, but I wonder if that's what this is. That might be for a status LED. None of them are really labeled like an LED would be labeled. Is my glucose level crashing? Hold on. No, it's normal. This one is, this one has kind of a mark on it. <laughs> I mean, I could, yeah, I could do a rotary encoder. Sorry, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. That's that ain't no LED, but there's space for an LED somewhere on this board. So if it is Oh, it's not. Wait a minute. Other way around. Hold on. Okay, so that's where the LED goes. That's for the LED right there. Let's discover. I got the multimeter out here. See if I can't use one of these other guys as my Jeez, it's focusing on the okay let's move that back all right let's see oh yeah look at that the picture 
PCB has a label on it. So it would be that one right there. Hold on. Let me take a look. Ohm it out. When in doubt, ohm it out. This is going to stick to the first piece of metal that I can find. But um, All right, so LEDs right here on these two. Let's, let's do, I need this. Uh, so which one of y'all, which one of y'all over here is associated with that LED? I'd rather install an LED just on the module itself so I can see it blinking. So uh, this would be, oh, look at them. That's cute. They didn't label the pins on the LED at all. It's adorable. You guys are a menace. I guess they show one going to, to ground the, the common pin of everything. It's still kind of ridiculous that they, ah! Well, these two pins for the LED, one of them's red. I mean, there should also be a cut in this, in this right here. That should be flat. So anyway, we know which one is the, the anode of the LED, and it's this one right here. And that's the one I'm interested in where it's going. Actually, I can see that connected to ground, too. So that one right there. And then look at this pin. Eh. 300 ohms, 300 kilo ohms. That's not it. Other side? 0.4. That's our LED. So the second stop for an LED is usually not ground. Check. It is ground. Okay, so I just need to install an LED right here. That's it. Let me get a pink LED. We'll just we'll just put that in there. <laughs> all right, where did I where did I put those? I think I put them in my, all my surface mount stuff. I have some smaller LEDs that we can use. I think they are. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're smaller LEDs. Been a little while since we even soldered anything in here. Been a little while. We don't even need to put a resistor on it apparently. Uh, let's see. These are too big. Yeah, that's way too big. That's like. Way too big. All right, smaller. There we are. You gotta put a UV LED on it. Now we'll put we'll put a pink LED on it. All right. Do I need to hold this down? I don't think I do. We'll just do it on top of the blue tape, and uh, we'll go to one of these views. Doesn't an ultraviolet LED kind of defeat the purpose? Uh. No? Not if you want to see all the stains. Pink. Ta-da! Okay, so this is probably going to be ridiculously bright, and I'm going to be mad at it. Uh, so our, our negative pin is here. It's the one with the mark, which is a little weird, but we can work with that. And then we'll remove the solder from that positive pin just to make it easier. Just to make it a little easier. And then I need... Uh, I can get away with that. Yeah, that, that, that'll be okay. That's an okay tip. I should probably tape down this thing so that it stays on camera, too. Uh, I only have captain tape visible. Oh, no, there's some painter's tape. All right, hold on. <coughs> dude, dude. A little, little sheet of painter's tape on that just to hold it still. You can see through painter's tape, so... <laughs> you just gotta be careful out there, alright? Yeah, good enough. That'll hold her still. Hold on, I gotta scooch it over a little bit. There we go. Alright, so, uh, desoldering braid, heat up the soldering iron, get to work. Gotta do work. Where's my braid? Where's my braid? Where'd that go? Did they even have it? Did it ever exist? Was it always a dream? It was always a dream, apparently. I have more of the stuff, but I like to work on one reel at a time. Where could it be? Let's see here. Desoldering braid, where are you? There, give you guys a slightly, slightly bigger view of, of everything going on here. This, uh... Just completely disorganized mess is as usual in the way. And hindering my operation, because somewhere around here, I do have a thing of... Oh, I should probably put the glasses back in this. I do have a thing of desoldering braid. Just need to find it. Usually it gets under stuff. That's typically where the desoldering braid ends up. 
under and around and through. There's the old webcam that's waiting for that. Uh, I really hope that guy's okay. <laughs> the Kurokesu. I hope I've funneled a little business towards him too. Because it's a good, it makes, it's a nice machined camera protecting thing. Be cool if more streamers wanted stuff like that. If they used C-mount lenses more. I just fear, I fear that lack of sales might uh, hinder my ability to get that thing. I don't know where my desoldering braid is. It, it's run away. It is gone. Is it behind the pencil bin? Nope. No. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. I'll start another one. As soon as I do this, I'm going to find the old one. As soon as I do this, I'm gonna find the other one. And then who will be laughing? Okay. Boop. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's the one. There it is. So I literally just taped this to the power supply of the controller because the power supply of the controller weighs more. And will hold the circuit board still. Iron on. See it heat up in thermals. There it goes, and it's hot. All right, so what I'm going to do is remove the solder because I want to be able to lay that LED down flat. Alternatively, I could just try to heat up both leads at the same time, but eh, whatever. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. I can keep solder on one of them, I guess, but I do need to remove it from the other. It'd be real nice if I could actually solder some... Hey! <laughs> it's like stuck. Don't stick. I'm going to add solder to that. It's like fighting me. It's fighting me. Our goal here is to set this thing up as a test device. So maybe I should put headers on this thing. I think I should put headers on it. I should probably put headers on it. That'll make it easier to work with. I don't really have two row headers. I don't know. I don't need to. It might be the lead free solder needing higher temperatures, but uh, generally it shouldn't fight that much. I just had to build up a little heat there. Now there's heat and flux, so I should be able to work with it properly. Heat und flux. All right, let's get this one uncovered. Let's give it a little time to work. There you go. All right, now we need to know which pin is negative of our pink LED. Uh, what direction is it? Hold on. The T, I have, I have a little, I have a little guide. The T is the positive. Okay, so it is in the right orientation right now. Boy, it, this thing needs a small LED and I just don't, I don't have that. That's going to be a pain in the ass to get this to flow because it's directly connected to ground, isn't it? Oh my god. Where's my solder? There it is. Big LED problems. Yeah, that's what it is. Let's try to get this in here. Where's my board? There it is. This is like the smaller size that I bought too. These are these are not large. They'd be getting crazy with the sizes of LEDs these days. Yeah, that's why they didn't install it. Uh, there's all kinds of bullshit on my tweezers, too. I need to clean those. All right, hello? There we go. See, the problem being that this, this board probably has a really good ground plane on it. Or at least just a large ground plane that they're, that they're using for this. So when I try to keep this solder going... It will heat sink out and away. I'm trying to move it back right now, but I can't get enough heat into it in order to get that thing to stay solder. Two SMD capacitors back to back on their side because they didn't have one of the correct sides. I did that. <laughs> I actually did that. I had to do that uh, for Julian's Norn.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. A 300 watt soldering iron, you'd think it would be able to get over a simple ground plane. Oh, you little bastard. All right, come on, buddy. Get in there. Uh, wow, God, there's like slight attractive force on the uh, the tweezers that was preventing it. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta like not talk while I do this. I gotta not talk while I do this. Uh, it's heat sinking it away like directly. All right, we'll just, we'll help it out. Go to my hairy flux. Ah! Can I scratch the board? What the hell? There we go. That's all I need. Just a little tiny bit. Just put a plastic tip on that. My tweezers are like super sticky. Hold on. The tweezers being sticky is really irritating me. Also in a weird position. And my back is trying to kill me right now. It's trying to fold me into a pretzel or some kind of pretzel approximate shape. But my body feels the need to, uh, to arrange itself into. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sum of my parts. I don't know how the individual parts exactly function, but I guess they seem to think they have a good idea in doing what they're doing. What kind of tweezers? Um, you can buy, like, packs of tweezers all over the place. Uh, I don't, the specific brand that I use, I don't, I don't know. Um, these are Technitool, the 2ANEs, and these are like, it's like a separate set of hands for me, this specific set of tweezers. I have other kits with tweezers, and I have other shapes of tweezers, but it's the rounded front ones that grab onto surface mount stuff properly. And one of the one of the better things is that this wide front will keep the tweezers from doing the thing where the two two ends go bloop, and they, they like they hit up against one another and they go bloop, and then it throws your stuff into low earth orbit. All right, so I just want to straighten this thing out. This thing is bugging me. What are you doing, LED? Because we will need to check the status and stuff. So put a bunch of flux down, and now, presumably, theoretically, hey, Cosmo Quest, rate of 26, how's it going? We had Code Rush coming earlier, too. We're working on a wireless wheel module, and if that's confusing, you may just need to Google it. Keeper of Maps, how's it going? Um, hold on. I've explained this a thousand times. This project is so complicated that, ah, that, uh, God, this is fucking me up. This stupid... Mm, they put a big ground plane right on that pin. So I'm having trouble keeping it at temperature. Um, yeah, Cosmo Quest. How's it going? Uh, Keeper of Maps subbing with 26 months saying woot. Welcome, welcome. So here's the deal. My Gigantmo Ultra Force Feedback Steering Wheel that uses real car parts. This, this mofo down here. Boop, boop, boop. This little guy right here. I gotta like wipe that off. What is that weird? I'm not used to seeing that part of the wheel. Um, uses real car parts and a three phase, two horsepower industrial servo motor in order to relay all kinds of stuff to the computer. Give me a nice big, nice big force feedback wheel. So in order to do that, I needed a universal motor controller and I bought a Granite Devices Simu Cube. Now the Simu Cube communicates to the outside world in several different ways. You have an encoder, you have your big three phase motor lines coming into the thing, um, and then you have ethernet connectors. It's not exactly the newest technology in the world. Ethernet connectors where you can hook up buttons. There's only so many of those though. I have a steering wheel that uses a digital protocol because it's an actual car steering wheel. So we were able to actually reverse engineer it, brute force the signal, get data back from the wheel. There's just like a packet that has ones and zeros arranged depending on the status of the buttons. You hit a button, zero becomes a one. Cool, okay, so how then do I relay that information over to the actual controller that's acting like a joystick? Well, the way that I did it was I have a microcontroller sitting here and it's communicating with a port expander 
and the port expander puts a one or a zero on the line that you're supposed to connect to a physical button. We gotta do that. We gotta pretend like we're a button. It's not enough. We've got tons of buttons down there, and I want to actually put a shifter on this thing, which is gonna be more buttons. This is actually not the design that I'm going with. We tried this one and it sucks. I spent a lot of money on the hardware for this one too. I'm really disappointed in it. Because this this shifter puts all of your, you know, the, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, all that force is on this piece of 3D printed stuff. And I don't like that. That's bad. That's real bad. Um, the other shifter has gates and it's a little bit more organized and it's smaller. I, I don't know. I'm going with the other 3D printed. These are all thingiverse prints. But yeah, I'm going with the other 3D print shifter project. Um, when I do that, I will have seven more buttons that I need to deal with. We're out of buttons. I've got all the buttons here and they're all done. There's only so many inputs, right? Decided not to purchase a longer rod. No, I don't want to do that. Nah. Nope. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the other one working. Uh I'll see how it feels. Miguel Oz! Keeper of maps and Miguel Oz. Thank you guys so much for the subs. 24 months. Two years. Yeah. I reached two years on some of my subs too. It's crazy. I had 32 for one. When did that happen? I think we're all in agreement that. 20, 2021 and 2022 we're just we're put them they're under the carpet well some of 2022 but yeah we're just not we're just not talking about the, the those are the years that we're just going to ignore <laughs> welcome to 2021 everybody 2020 part one and two anyway yeah thank you for the 24 months miguel Oz. i really appreciate that man um so anyway wh what's going on yeah i think you subbed at the beginning of yeah i think so well 26 yeah that sounds about right doesn't it well, thank you, Keeper of Maps. I really appreciate all the the consistent subs. You guys are crazy. You're crazy. Y'all crazy. So here's the deal. Um, we, for the longest time, we were pretending that we were buttons, right? We were pretending that we were pushing buttons. But, but, um, the system can have many, many more buttons connected to it. In fact, I think it can do 128 buttons. We just have absolutely no way of unlocking that. The only thing that we have available to us is the wireless wheel. And since we're not a manufacturer, we don't get in on, you know, the cool stuff that's behind the scenes with the wireless wheel. Granted devices, I believe we, we have had, we have had, um, have had, have, have had, uh, you know, a Granted Devices staff member in chat before talking about unlock or, or releasing the API, the API, the Advanced Programming Interface, right? The API, in, in the sense that I'm talking about it right now, would be if we could plug into the TX and the RX of the microcontroller in here, and we could literally just tell it the buttons that are getting pushed. But they haven't released anything like that. And so I don't, I don't know how to do any of that. There's no, you know, they haven't communicated any of it. We could try to brute force something, but what form is that going to take? That's weird. Maybe there's a serial connection somewhere that we can get in on. Well, the stuff that I'm good at is reverse engineering electronics. Physically, a little bit of a little bit of a little bit more into the engineering a little bit with myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a classic bother. And what we're going to do is buy the $100 of hardware to have a wireless wheel module. And I say going to do is we already did all it. But the $100 wireless wheel module, it's another $100 that I just literally burn in front of my face and then I cry. Um, however, now that I've got this thing, what we could do plug it in, get it functioning with the system, and then listen in to the phone call that they're having and figure out how to pretend that I'm this module. So this microcontroller right here is going to say, hey, it's me, the wireless wheel module. And the controller will be like, hey, why, why are you talking funny? And it's like, no, nah, don't worry about that. Hey, look at these buttons. And it's like, man, you're weirding me out. But yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to listen in on the phone call and then pretend to be this. I had to buy this in order to pretend to be it, but whatever. So that's that's what we're working on today. Thank you so much for the raids, everybody. I appreciate the consistent raids. All right, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solder an LED to this thing just because we need a status LED while we test this. So I'm going to leave it hanging off of the pins to the side. I just stopped caring. <laughs> I've stopped caring and I've let myself go. Okay, I need to, I need to retin the, the tip. Uh, solder is not... Solder's doing weird stuff on it, so I'm just going to cover it in solder. Cover the tip in the solder. And give it a minute to think about what it's done, and clean it off. 
All right. I failed. <laughs> now the dry sponge is kind of a weird thing. All right, so. Smells like flux. Good smell. Yeah, a little bit of solder on this pin right here. You bastard. Why are you not flowing in? There it goes. And then it's too much. All right, so there. Our LED is now soldered. I could probably touch up that other side, but it'll lead to a whole odyssey of me soldering and resoldering and double resoldering. So I don't, I don't know where the LED is on this, on the, or sorry, the resistor is on this LED, uh, because I, I tested the two pins. They say to just put an LED on these two pins at the top corner. So we ohmed out one of the pins, we ohmed out the top corner, and we found that it is directly connected to this pin right here. And then I ohmed out this pin, and it's directly connected to ground. So there's already a resistor installed in there. So that's all we need to do. I, uh, the only thing that I could really do in addition to that is just clean up the flux. Just brush it with uh, some... I use acetone that's orange-flavored. But that's it for the soldering. I can... Well, actually, no, we're not done soldering it. All right, so I got a choice here. I can install just the pins that we need and then it would probably be easier for me to find them in the future. I don't think I have two row headers. So I think what we need to do is, ah, do I want to make this into something that plugs into a breadboard? Probably. Where are the pins that we need? Hold on. No, they're like that. I mean, we're eventually going to need to be pushing all of the buttons, but we don't necessarily need all the, all the pins installed. We don't need the header installed because we can just use a piece of wire to press those buttons and just connect it to ground. So we need ground, we need button button, and we need our power pin, which is on the opposite side. Ah, come on, guys. <laughs> Throw me a freaking bone here. Damn it. That's obnoxious. All right, fine. So power's all the way on that side. And then, because like, all right, so... In the grand scheme of things, I could have done button, button, or I could have done one row, the next row over, and then this one would be the, the row after that. And then that would plug into the breadboard, save for this ground pin over here. I was hoping if these were side by side over there, I could just make a nice clean module that plugs into the, the prototyping board, right? This thing is wide enough that if I plug it into the prototyping board, it's going to be obnoxious to work with. Basically, I just want to use the prototyping board so that I can hook power up to this thing so it doesn't slip off. And so we got the two buttons and we can do our thing with them, right? Annoying. All right, fine, 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 fine. Uh, I could install that row and then, because we already have the LED installed. So I've already got those three rows that are open and ready to go. Um, then I just have to pull power pins over to something else. We have ground in that corner. Just thinking, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking, I'm having thoughts. That's what I do. I mean, I guess what I could do is three pins. Nah, that doesn't really work. Ah, uh, bop, bop, bop. Well, how many, how many pins do we need overall? Five. We can do five pins and then wires going to the module. All right, fine. <laughs> it's never clean, is it? Never clean. So we'll do, uh, let me get a perforated prototyping board. What did I put on my perf boards? We haven't done perf boarding in a while. They're just stashed in here, right? There's a couple projects that exist on perf boards right now and I haven't gotten back to. There we are. We can use this one. Probably clean all this stuff up though. Jeez. <laughs> sloppy. I've been sloppy. I don't know what you are. Three nine four. What am I doing with the transistor over there? Oh, that was for relay day. That was a long time ago. I mean, if I do the module on three pins, I don't think it's going to hold itself up. And we want to be able to see the top of this thing and see how it's wider than the <laughs> it's wider than the board that I want to use. Damn it! All right. I could do the two pins for power and ground, and then. No, then it's blocking it's blocking the other side. At least they kind of kept it with 0.1 inch spacing. Oh no, they didn't. What the heck? Yeah, they went metric. <laughs> ah, it doesn't even line up. 
curses. All right. It's just going to have to be wires then. Five pins. Uh, pins are over here. I want to at least get this thing working today, and then we can worry about reverse engineering it later. Thursday, I've got a special project that I'm really excited about. Very expensive stuff. Thinking about, can I do right angles? Nah. No, it's going to have to just be five pins directly. Actually, it should probably, you know what? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use this. I don't have any other use for this stuff, and this is like a trash project, right? This is just going to, None of this stuff is, like, permanent, so we'll just take five of these. Oh, my wire cutters are on the other. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Do I need a sixth? I don't think so. Uh, paddle, paddle, power, ground, LED. It's not even necessary, but I'll do it anyway. Yeah, it's only five. All right, I'm only going to do five. One, two, three, three, three. And then we'll use, we'll use a, like, a piece of wire to do the other button connections when we're actually sniffing its farts. I mean packets, when we're actually sniffing its packets. I could do it with uh, the anchor pins. No, the anchor pins are... I should probably anchor the module onto the board just so I don't lose it or do something stupid. I could just do, I could do a pin in each corner. That means I need two individual pins. Just to use as standoffs. Do I have any, like, individuals floating around? Not really. Not really. I can just slice them off of something else. Yeah, that's a three pin. I need to go get my wire cutters, because that's what I use to cut pin header rows off. But yeah, anchoring it to the board is just a, uh, just because it'll be moved around a lot in the shop. And I don't want the wires snapping off of it when I do that. So let me just get this thing. Doot, doot. Do, do, shuffle my way over like an old man. Ah, this thing was so expensive. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, man, did I really spend all that money? Just ignore it. Ignore it. I spent all that money so that I could not have to buy this thing. <laughs> Where are the other sim racers coming up with this stuff, huh? <laughs> Where are those guys? You should be standing on the backs of their efforts. No, I'm out here all on my own. Coming up with this stuff. One there. Where's the other one? That'll go right there. Oops, I lost it. Where does that go? It was like there. And that'll sit like this. It'll be a little wobbly, but... Uh, solder? There it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the multimeter. Get that out of the way. My multimer. Multimeter. Metering all this stuff. <laughs> That's my back's hurting. Gotta carry the entire sim community. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. When you're right, you're right. You're right. Oh god, this is that the same problem with the rest of the modules that they they have no uh thermal relief on their ground. Cuz this is like a structural pin. No thermal relief, so I got to hold Look at look at the dissipation though. That's good heat dissipation. <laughs> well, I'm full on getting the side of the of the iron tip on there so I get full Full contact. Are you guys watching Rabaz in parallel? How's he getting on with the uh, the Steam Deck? I'm interested in that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get one if my if my number is up according to Valve, and they go, "Hey, bother! Do you want to buy a Steam Deck?" I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to say no. I can't afford it right now. I just spent a hundred dollars on that. Look at how hot that. Th Look at that heat dissipation. That's beautiful. That's really good. He struggled a lot, but I saw that you were online and came here and said, I appreciate you coming over here. Um, was it a struggle stream? 
is it a struggle stream or is he back to playing uh i mean it's, it's this is a new toy he's gonna be playing with the you know for a while yeah man that's good heat dissipation all right um so we're gonna do that and then i'm gonna do five pins i guess up here we'll just do it like that uh oh but power and ground should probably come over here so i can plug it in and he'll just get two row header it's so unlogical it hurts what robert <laughs> that's that sounds like a typical stream uh power and ground we're just gonna i'm just gonna build it into this thing uh no you know what no 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 no. i'm gonna run all the pins out to this header and that way i can run i can run jumpers behind it to power and ground that's how that's how we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I was saying he needs to have like a bathroom stream, but he's got to hook it up to a ton of stuff to get it running on his setup because he's got the separate. That's not the right one. He's got the separate streaming computer and stuff. So he needs to it needs to run to a separate computer that's doing all the you know, saving and stuff like that. We had a reservation for the big one. I don't know if I'm going to get it either. Yeah, that was me. You know, beginning of the pandemic, I was going, man, this thing would be awesome. Then I could sit in bed with depression and just play games and piss myself. Um, but then now I've just, I just bought a new phone. Like I, I can't afford anything. I probably should have seen if AT&T would, would have wanted to help me get a new phone though. I'm on the grandfathered permanent uh, data plan. But I had to get a new phone because they were shutting down the 3G network. So, rest in peace, $5. He's not streaming direct from OBS on the Switch. No, I don't think, I think he's got it, he's got it hooked up to his whole setup. So, it's, he's got like a, a USB hub and everything. Yeah, I didn't get the phone through the phone company. I got it through, um, I just bought it on Amazon for like a billion dollars. Phones are fucking expensive. But the thing is, eventually, uh, my phone is going to be part of my diabetic care. So I gotta, I gotta, I wanted to get a nice one so that I could keep it for like seven years. My old phone lasted me about seven years. Just about. Not quite. All I had on it was a screen protector. <laughs> I don't even have a screen protector on this new one. I think it's got different glass. Super strong. I, I would love, I listen, I would love to fool around with the Steam Deck. Don't get me wrong on that one. Um, but, yeah, I can't afford it. I would love to take one apart on stream and we could see exactly how how much like a computer it is. But, uh, I mean, Linus Tech Tips already took one apart. So if you want to see that, you can go see that. Um, I can't spend $700 on something. The newer glasses for phones are super tough. Hope so, because I think it would probably be prohibitive for me to try to replace the uh, the screen on this one. And phones are like glued together, so I don't even know how I'd start. Probably have to look something up. Like I have no idea how I could take this thing apart. I mean, the screen has a bit of a bevel to it, and so there's there is a big gap there. And this is a lot thicker than you know. Well, my old phone was I think thinner than this. Believe it or not. I'm glad for all the battery space, but yeah, if I had to repair this, getting in there would be tough. Might not be impossible, though. Oh, my battery's at 100%. It's nice. <laughs> Wi-Fi calling is not as great as I thought it would be in here because of the, the weird service. And whenever the phone switches from edge to Wi-Fi calling, every everything, everything is just interrupted. It It sucks. But I gotta live with it. It's been decently consistent. It's just every now and then my phone is like emergency calling only. And I'm like, why? What are you doing? All right, so we're not gonna need much wire here. So I'm just gonna use the thinnest stuff. I'm gonna use this stuff, my hookup wire, which is not incredibly good for this application, to be honest. No, this will be okay. This will be okay. We can do this. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why, that's why I get the super crazy phone, is because I want it to last. 
my other phone was really irritating me with those handoff things that it did. But it, I don't know, it was okay. It was still working. A lot of people have had trouble with the fingerprint scanner, uh, but I, I have not. All right, let's tin these first. So this is just going to be a temporary hookup. Something that I've done many times before. Maybe I'll do it for the other side. That'll make it a little easier to work with. Let's go and flip this. And then this will be right here. And that way... Well, I don't want to block that row. This will block like three rows if I do it that way. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. If I did it vertically, it wouldn't block them, but I want to use this angled header because uh, because I have it. Yeah, that's. I guess I'm blocking power and ground, and that's fine. So that'll go out and around. I think I think this phone has dual SIM slots, but why would I do that? I don't. I, I live in America, right? If I drive four hours in any direction, I'm still going to be in America, and all the all the networks are the same. Why do I need more SIM cards? <laughs> I don't need other other numbers. I am going to have two phones soon for the, for the Omnipod insulin pump, but I'm hoping that that makes inroads towards allowing an Omnipod application to run on a cell phone, a regular cell phone, because all, all their little control module is is a cell phone. I don't know what Android it's running or whatever, but it would be nice. I think they're, they're in the approval stages of, the, of all that shenanigans. One's positive. Okay, let's use positive power. Um, hello? Daughter? Daughter? Oh, turned itself off. God damn it. <laughs> it thought I was gonna burn down my house. Yeah, that's I think I think that I saw that in the data that it had a virtual secondary sim. I have one physical sim. I think it was sent to me a long time ago. I had to go to a phone store, and they're like, what do you, what? This isn't even the right technology. Because <laughs> like, I, hadn't, I hadn't done anything with my phone plan in so long. Uh, where's my positive power? That is on. One X is not labeled here. Oh, thanks. Why does this have 2023 on it? It was a coincidental number. Um, hold on. Power on ground is there. So, all right. Oh, so it's right there. Ha! Ah. Ha ha! I'm the wiener. It's going to be weird having two phones again. The last time I had two phones, I was working for the FBI, and they gave me a phone so that I could work with like certain tools and stuff that they had but it was like this weird samsung phone i'm not really a fan of samsung nothing personal we just dated the same girl in high school at the same time fucking samsung no i just i don't like the design of their phones <laughs> Right. Power. Ground. Ground. Wow, oh, Jesus Christ, what's going on with this wire? <laughs> I think oh boy. There's like a big loop. Uh eh, there it is. There's like a portion of this where they tied it to itself to make the full length. Oh god. So it's just like this stuff sitting out. Ah, uh, don't like that. I don't want to have to re-spool the entire fucking thing, though. God, that would be annoying. All right, so let's take a little, let's take a little piece of this wire. Where's my? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I know what I'm doing. I'm awake. I'm alive. Narrator. He wasn't. I have two phones. Once for work. It's wrong about three times in the past year with genuine calls as opposed to scam. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, I've moved all of my charging stuff to wireless, which is kind of cool. I haven't, I haven't messed with wireless charging, because my phone was metal. <laughs> my actual phone was metal, it was awesome. But, uh, yeah, I went to, uh, went to wireless charging on everything now. 
pretty cool. Excited about that. I'm trying to do a clean job of this right now. Here, you guys need more of a view of what I'm doing. This is basically all I'm doing right now. This and hosting a radio show. That's harder to see, isn't it? Huh. Oh, well. <laughs> What is it you say you do here? All right, like that. If I want to be nice and clean and organized, I need to kind of follow that run over there, measuring it with my fingers. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I would assume they've worked stuff out with wireless charging about not causing a ton of noise. I guess because the antennae are in different places or something. It should, by all means, be causing all kinds of noise, but I guess they just deal with it. Because yeah, I've never, I haven't had any problems yet. I haven't noticed any weirdness. My toothbrush recharges wirelessly. That thing was worth every penny. That's one of those Sonicare things, and uh, my dental appointments went from. Uh, I'm bleeding out because you're poking me with metal instruments to eh, everything's fine. They're like bored. They're like bored with my teeth now. So do yourself a favor. Get one of them sonic toothbrushes. Learn how to use it properly. Pretty crazy. Uh, why is that one welding itself? Weird. Hopefully that's not a ground. It's just not cooperating with the iron. Some fishy's going on with the... I think it's just their... They, they made a very good ground plane on this board, and I think it's just messing with my head. I'm having a lot of trouble soldering to this. Hello? What is going on here? Ah, am I... Is it me? Am I bad at this? What's going on? <laughs> this is really messing with me. I just can't... I can't seem to get heat into these pins. Maybe I just need to use the bigger soldering iron. Get heated, fool. What is going on? Oh my god, I'm going to the bigger... I can't, I can't tolerate this. This should be like the easiest soldering ever. And it's like, I don't know, it's just messing with me. Maybe my tip's going bad or something. Use a larger tip. I've got a bunch of them. I mean, it could be the tinning of the tip too, but... Ow, that was hot. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was toasty. That's... Put the glowing lightsaber back. Eh. Yeah, there we go. Heat, heat, heat. There we go. Perfect. You gonna retain a little bit of that heat for me? Not really. Wow, that was weird. I'm I'm a little weirded out by how difficult that was to solder. Um, all right, so we need we'll do LED and then these the two at the bottom can be the um the paddles. One and two. So I'll probably should I hook them up to one button? <laughs> That'd probably be the way to go. Uh all right, so color wire. I mean I've got five colors of wire, so I guess I'm gonna use one for everything, huh? We'll use yellow for this one. The yellow wire has a slightly different jacket on it, so I can't quite use my... No, that worked. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, I can't quite use my fingernail method of removing the wire jacket. Okay, yellow wire. A little bit long, but that'll be all right. Just got to make sure that I control where my iron is in space, because when I try to find it, on the microscope view, it'll end up wandering, and then I'll end up melting stuff. I'll, I'll bump the iron into stuff. I'll end up melting things. Ah, good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. It's good enough. All right, the LED pin is all the way on the other side, and it's right next to the paddle pin. So the paddle pins are... Where's my pointer? Where's my pointer? There's my pointer. Where did it go? So we've got... LED, uh, uh, hold on, LED, paddle, paddle. Weird spot for everything, but we can deal with it. 
The wire is almost not long enough. It is, in fact, not long enough. No, I can, I can work with that. There's only a little bit of excess wire there. Eh. So I can go under it to get to that. I don't know. I don't know how I want to do this. Here's what I got for my tweezers. Tweezers. Hello? Tweezers? No, what have I done with my tweezers? Not again. I feel like I'm losing my mind. There it is. There's so much stuff and so many projects going on right now that uh, it's very easy for stuff to kind of get, get lost. Uh, which is why I have a place for everything and I need to, I need to be more militant about making sure that stuff goes exactly where I'm supposed to put it. Because that's how you find it again, right? That's too long. I need to shorten that a little bit. Ugh, just put the wire cutters away. What's wrong with me? This is way too close, but it's at least using all my equipment, you know? <laughs> We're like, you guys are like shoving your nose into my project. Which is, I don't know, that's kind of normal for chat, I guess. I guess we could have used jumpers for this. I could have just soldered headers to it. Nah, I'll do it this way. Yeah, bigger tip, more flux. That's working out. All right, next is purple. Purple. Uh, you know what? The thing is getting here on Thursday, so that might have to be a Friday project. So Thursday, but I'm getting parts for the shifter on Thursday, so, huh. I don't know. I don't know what this week's schedule is going to be like. I'm excited about all the stuff that I get to build, but... <laughs> I'm kind of shoving your noses in. That's true. I get to direct where you guys have to be. I gotta remember that you guys are watching too. Down we go. Full car build. I would love that, man. You know how cool that would friggin' be if I could get a Catrum or something? It's like, yeah, we're gonna build a Caterham S7. <laughs> Let's start opening boxes. That'd be so cool. Oh, I would love to do a kit car. They don't require you to do electronics work, though. It's mostly just wrenching bolts. Been meeting hell. Uh, it takes me like a half an hour to explain what the project is. I got the wireless wheel module from Granite Devices, which is like $100, and I'm not happy about that. Uh, but in spite of my rage, um, in spite of my rage over spending money, uh, we're trying to get the wireless wheel module hooked up to my Granite Devices controller, so that we can listen in on the phone call and pretend to be the wireless module. We've looked up a lot of data about how this thing works. Uh, it, it's got a TX and RX in it. I mean, that's the, the simplest form of it. It has, it has a method by which to communicate with a wireless module that is programmed specifically to do the communications with Granite Devices. So what we need to do is listen in on the phone call and pretend to be that module. And that way I will be able to uh, hook up all of the extra buttons that I want. I can get full functionality out of the steering wheel and I can hook up the shifter as well. Uh, Cause I don't, I don't need this to be in the steering wheel. I don't know. Turbo Nad, I was talking to about this and he keeps pushing me to try to put this into the steering wheel so that I can have multiple different steering wheels. I'm not doing that. I am, I'm going to reverse engineer the protocol and that way I have access to all of the extra buttons. Now, the, 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 the kicker is that there are a lot, there are a lot of other ways to do this. And the most efficient way would be for us to just get into the TX and the RX, not even in the wireless module, just TX and RX, in order to communicate with the Granite Devices controller or software or whatever, so that it, it can push those buttons, right? That would be the best way to do it. That would be an API 
and they just haven't published anything with the API. They just, they're not, there's no incentive for them to do that, except for me complaining. Uh, so they're not doing that. Another method that we could use in order to do this thing is to put more IO expanders on the microcontroller and have the two modules inside of my control box wirelessly communicating with one another. That would be ridiculous, but it would be the easier way for me to do this uh, in the way that I want. But I, I think this is the best way. I don't know, there have been a lot of alternative ideas and stuff today, and I don't like being piloted by other people. I have my justifications for why I do everything the way that I do it. Plus, you get to show off a little reverse engineering. So yeah, we're just getting into it. I'm just um, getting the module to function properly, so we're putting it onto a lab setup where I can subject it to all kinds of forms of modern torture. The next one is this one right here, so just trying to measure that out. And then bend the little end, and then I'm gonna put that right there. So that it needs the two paddle buttons we learned. So the two paddle buttons are for getting it to connect with the base station. I'm not sure how the base station does the discovery phase. Might have to trigger it to do that in the software. But yeah. Do reverse engineering with the X FBI, dude. Gonna learn something new, I'm sure of it. I don't know. Everybody everybody thinks I do stuff wrong. So <laughs> and I do mostly. A lot of the time I'm doing rapid prototyping, you know? That wasn't exactly the right way to solder. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we got our, all five of our things plugged in. Um, I probably need a button for both of those to hit them at the same time. It would be nice if I could hook them up to the same button, but... Uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. Um, all right, what am I looking for? I have a thing of buttons. Or I just have, yeah, I have a module that I can plug into this thing that I can use. I just need to keep my shop from attacking me. I've got stacks of stuff everywhere. You're going to learn some new curse words. There you go. Yeah, that's very true. All right, headers. Headers. Uh, those are just going to go there. These I'll probably need in a minute. Bring these down. This thing goes there. Thing of wires. Go over there. These things of wires can get out of my way. That thing's heavy. Damn it. Go there. I don't care. Uh, you. Uh, and then I get this. Uh, uh. An incredible crashing noise would have resulted from that. I really need to clean off the top of the desk here. It's starting to get a little overrun. All right. I've got some buttons that I soldered to a board just because when you plug buttons into the into the prototyping board they tend to slip out they don't have quite enough lead length to provide a nice uh a nice buttony experience so yeah i'm gonna put these here they're sloppy as hell doesn't matter that goes here yeah All right, so those buttons go to these two pins. Power's hooked up to the rail. Uh, and then the other pin is an LED. So we're ready to, ready to perf this thing. Shame I can't observe TX and RX on this. The only TX, oh, excuse me, whew. The only TX and RX we have is between this Bluetooth module and a port expander, which is not what we want. Uh, we want the module communicating to the base station and it's unfortunate that this is this is this is both our microcontroller and our rf module if this is just the micro uh and there's a chance we could remove this can and there would be like a like a microcontroller that's hooked up to a wi-fi module anyway uh, or not a wi-fi bluetooth module but anyway what no we can't we can't observe that communication directly from this unless i hook this up to rf equipment and then we'd have to 
we'd have to work it within the protocol of USB and everything, but this is where we're going to hook up to get that TX and RX, and we're going to look at these pins right here. Those, I believe, are labeled on the Granite Device's uh, motherboard. So we will know which ones are TX and RX in the end. Get the giant syringe out of the way. <laughs> okay, uh, we just want confirmation of connection. Where did my... I put them all the way over here. Got them. This may look large and convoluted in terms of setups, and it is. <laughs> That's because it is. How did I connect this? This is not connected at all. Oh, here it is. Okay, here it's connected. Fish. I was like, I didn't connect anything. What? What? What was I doing? This looks shorted out, though. Eh? What the fuck? It's like completely shorted out. I mean, it's four leads here, so it should make perfect sense how this thing is connected. There's like a lead, like, <laughs> all right, I gotta correct this thing immediately. Jeez, weird. What was I thinking when I built this? Did I build this on stream? It was like a programmer going over their old code. Actually, it is. It's pretty much that. I didn't comment anything. All right, there we go. Yeah, what the, what the hell, past bother? What are you doing? Okay, so I need to connect those two to this. I can just do it like this, and then do two ground, and then two signal. All right, all right. See how it is. You can tell when I'm not wanted. I'll just, eh, shorter wires. Shorter wires. You can see the writing on the wall. Other streamers are like, no, you can't. <laughs> you can't tell when you're not wanted. It's kind of a steady state of not being wanted. What? Zion's Prophecy! Thank you for the two months. I really appreciate that. Zion's Prophecy. Oh, uh, there's like an old guy in a room of TVs, and uh, he has like a Philosophy 101 book. And, like, I don't know, he talked for, like, 40 minutes. I didn't really get anything out of it, but that's the prophecy of Zion. Really, just, like, just this, it's this, this Colonel Sanders-looking motherfucker. And he's in a room of, like, old TVs. Like, we don't even have any TVs like that anymore, you know? And, like, I don't know, he's just smelling his own farts for, like, 40 minutes. That's what I got from the prophecy. He's just, he's just whiffing them. I don't know. So that's why we have mech suits with guns. <laughs> Cypher's like, I gotta get back in the Matrix. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the prophecy of smoked paprika. Delicious. Put that shit in everything. Presumably this is going to achieve us buttons. Did I take two of them out? I thought I... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I tried to print the prophecy of Cayenne, but it was out. I don't even need to use the Cayenne. Why is it disabling my whole printer? This is, this is ridiculous. Uh, all right, so power and ground are going to be achieved through the power supply, which is going to get jumpers. So I need my power jumpers. I need to stop positioning my wire cutters where they have a tube or wire, like, right in the jaw. That's going to lead me to cutting something unintentionally at some point. Uh, all right, so what do we got? Well, do I already have power and ground hooked up to these things? No, probably not. Sometimes I put, put little, bits of, little bits of wire on the end. Yeah, there's, like, wires, like, hanging out around it. Uh, burn the subs is in the way, so I gotta kind of like reach around. Ugh. Hoping if I rewatch the Matrix, it'll make more sense. Mm. What the what you need to know about the Matrix is that it was a movie, a complete movie, complete, and it ended, and it had a nice end, nice little hopeful ending, and then 
Warner Brothers came to the Wachowskis and they said, it's now a trilogy. Here's a wheelbarrow full of money. And they went, oh, well. And so they expanded a lot of the story and it shows <laughs> it's not good. And then a couple of years ago, they came back to the Wachowskis and said, you got to make another one as like a reboot or else we'll make it with somebody else. And so they made kind of a half-assed, not really half-assed, more like a tongue-in-cheek sort of soft reboot. It's like a bad word. I hate yeah, soft reboots. Ugh. So anyway, they did it again. I couldn't even watch it. I didn't even get to the Matrix parts. Wrote what? We're talking about the Matrix, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> These are not using our brand of ink. Would you like to shop our brand of ink? Ugh. The, you can buy the little circuit modules out of printers, the ones that have the EEPROM in them. Yeah, I, man, the Animatrix is so good. <laughs> we, need, we need another Animatrix. That's what really should have gotten the reboot. Is the Animatrix, because that was freaking awesome. That was the best. I don't have that. All right, so there's our wireless wheel module all hooked up. What else do we need to do? So we'll give that power eventually. We need to figure out where we're plugging this other thing into. Where are you going? They don't really tell you, do they? Uh, SimuCube. Been out. <laughs> We've been on this page a lot. We are very familiar with this page. This is where we live our lives. Do 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 do. Nope. Keep moving. Keep moving through the data sheet. That was the one. That's what we need. He's the one. Stop it. No. Ah. Okay. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. We've got all these extra pins on this thing, right? All these extra pins where we can plug stuff in. I would... Is that for a... I, I guess those are for a screen. I, I wonder if I could put a screen on this thing. What kind of controls I'd have. Huh. I should have thought about that. It's like a 3D printer. Is that actually for a screen? Yeah, it looks like it is. Hmm, I should try that sometime. Plug a screen into this thing. We got all these IOs that I can't use. I liked it not as a Matrix movie, but as a rebellion move by one of the Wachowskis. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Why is SWD? I hope that's the wireless wheel module connection. It is. That has to be. Oh. Serial display connector, serial connector, FTDI USB cable compatible. I think we're plugging into the FTDI thing. Uh, boy, do they not really point out any of our connections here. I think we are just kind of like FTDIing it, which means I could probably plug it into an FTDI connector and look at it on the terminal, but... That's for debugging the arm. Okay. Uh, SimuCube, we'll just do like wireless wheel module. Look at the images. I never did an emergency stop. I probably should. Uh, yeah, their other, their other wireless wheel module actually uses two, um, what do you call it? Yeah, it uses two, uh, Whatever that hard drive, M M2, two M2 connectors, which is wild. But that's for that's for the like super duper or no, this is for everything else. Like for, for your design, you have to put two uh M2 connectors in there. That that's all I wanted to see. I just wanted to know what direction this thing plugged into. Yeah, two M2 connectors and you you attach that to your your wheel. But that's for that's for the more advanced ones, but they're not they don't sell these. I wonder if I can buy it. Hold on. I don't think it's supported in the earlier one. Let's 
seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, three thousand dollars for the SimuCube Two Ultimate. Jeez, three thousand dollars. Hey, Doctor Plugger, thank you for the thirty-one months. I could not. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> this would. This would murder me. I already have everything I need, though. Oop. I also would not like to know how much I've spent on this wheel project, as opposed to just spending twelve hundred dollars on on a smaller SimuCube. Uh, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> hey, Dr. Plugger, thank you. Appreciate it. No, uh, actually, wait. It does plug in uh, the FTDI, doesn't it? Where did that picture go? <laughs> there it is. No, it plugs into the other one. So what is that one? Serial display connector. Is that for real? Is this the for really real? Oh, it's on the page we were looking at. herp -a derp -a derp Yep. Yeah, it uses the display header. Okay. All righty. Plug it in. Get that in here. Boop. Just got to, like, sneak it under this board. <laughs> we built this thing. I, uh, I made this whole add-on board, and uh, we sized it to be standing over the card. Because there's a motor controller card under there. I put it all in the path of the fan. Make sure it stays cool. What's happening over here? Calm down. All right. So, presumably... and we Oh, we need the software, too. We need the software to be running. So, let me... i got to put some stuff away so that I can actually reach stuff. We're just going to verify that it works. So, I actually need one more jumper. One more jumper so that I can, quote-unquote, push buttons. I can push buttons on this thing. Buttons. Mountains. Buttons. A friend of mine from New Jersey talks like that. You live in the mountains. I'm like, what? These are hills. What are you? What are you? <laughs> what is this? All right. Uh, eh, 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 eh. Eh. I didn't want to close. Probably closed it on a connector. All right. Button pusher. Boink. And then boink. And then, yeah, we're set to go. All right. So I need the SimuCube programming program. And I think that's in a project directory. Unless it's just... Yeah, it's file folder. See users downloads. Is that where we use it from? I, I think I've been running it out of the directory. So I need to go to Merc Wheel. M. Merc Wheel. There it is. Merc Wheel Software. SimuCube FW. Uh, it's not the configuration tool. It is the... Is it Granity? I think it's Granity. No, it's not Granity. No, no, no. This is the wrong... I started the wrong program. I agree to the safety information, always. Yeah, this is this is where you tune the motor. So we had to do a bunch of stuff because it's a universal motor controller. Um, those of you who haven't been around, uh, we had to do a bunch of stuff to actually figure out the, the dynamics of our specific motor. And we've done this with a bunch of motors on, channel, on this channel before. If I can get my hands on any other three-phase motors... I would love to play around with them as well, but it's always a fun, kind of a fun process. Uh, there's a lot of cursing involved, but basically you need to run it through a test routine so that it goes from thing to thing, and then you need to lock down the rotor and let it let it kick it with um, voltage and all this kind of weird stuff in order to get all the parameters of your motor and then get it into your software. It's cool stuff. I don't think I saved a lot of the files when I got into that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um... What is the pro what is a program that I want? I think it's the SimuCube configuration tool. When I turn this thing on, yeah, okay, cool. All right, here we are. The SimuCube configuration tool. Now, uh, I should be able to give this well, let's let's turn on our system first. So here's the main wheel system turning on. Um, it does a little bit of automatic, yeah, but then you need to you obviously need to step in and stuff. It's it's really cool stuff. It's all all control systems and fun like that. All right, so this thing is going to go back and forth, and then it's going to go boop, boop, boop. 
you guys can't hear it, but it's actually vibrating the, 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 it's hitting the coils with power in order to make a vibration that creates a note. So it goes boop, boop, boop. And I didn't install anything that goes boop. Um, but yeah, now the wheel is under control and we've got maximum from our pedals. I might need to flip that around so that it doesn't do that. Uh, <laughs> maximum from our pedals uh, and we have one button pressed. Now, what I should be able to do, go into wireless wheels. Yeah, so we, we get a wheel that connects previously. And so if I turn on my power supply and let me move, let me move power over where it's not gonna blow something up and I give it three volts. Wait for this thing to turn on. Power supply is very high amp, so it takes a little bit for it to turn on. It's also cheap. <laughs> cheap and high amp. And it's also buried behind all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Voltage. Five, four, three. All right. Three volts. Go. All right. So three volts is not going to the device yet. Come down here. Down here where we can see the electronics. All right. And then... Focus on the thing. I know chat's in the way, but... Uh, well, first time powering. Let's just take a look at it. And move the power three volts over to this. Oh man, that is a bright LED. So we're getting a little flashes of it going into discovery mode. And look at that. Unnamed PB. Connect selected device. So I got a MAC address on this thing too. So there's a lot of like Bluetooth communications going on already. Signal strength 100. Yeah, it's literally right there. So if I start hitting buttons on this thing. Yeah. So I, here's the thing I don't get is that the, the front panel is showing me buttons 1 through 128. World's first LED the correct way the first time. <laughs> That's true. Low battery charge detected. <laughs> oh, I guess it's supposed to be 3.7. That's fine. Um, but if I hit a paddle, either paddle, it's not coming through. We got it connected. So how do we look at the profile? There's, there's a tab in here that I'm not, uh, tab in here somewhere that I need to find. Default profile, hardware setup, uh, X12 analog inputs. No, we don't need that. Centering spring, audible notification, advanced. That's firmware, force feedback state, password, debug event log. All right. Did it not connect? Maybe it didn't connect? But it did, it did detect a battery, so. And it says to automatically connect. Hey, what's up? Everything is a MAC address except for hamburgers. Huh. Yeah, it's not telling me the battery status here, so. Um, what happens if I press both at the same time? I need to press both at the same time and hold for five seconds. Or five or so. Oh, my ground wire slipped. Whoops. Boop. Blinking, blinking. Connected. Battery, 2.91. That's close enough. So if I go to the overview and I hit a button. Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. So it just appears on the bank of buttons. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, cool. So that's part of it, part of the story. Yep, there they are, all those buttons. All them little buttons. Is it? Did it just disconnect? Every time it transmits, it's the LEDs going off, and I don't know if I'm, I'm connecting these to ground. That should be perfectly fine. I 
Oh, it seems a little squirrely about. Yeah, that is a chatty LED. That LED is all over the place. It broke it. Yeah, it's already broken. I destroyed it. I killed it in my anger. No! My LED! I think I'm shorting something with the wrong, wrong type of signal. I don't know why that's happening. Yeah, it seems to be powering down every time. Maybe the button pin has to be specifically a button, but you can see every time, every time an, uh, an input comes by... Oh, it didn't reconnect. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? My cables are a little bit weird. Did it not auto-reconnect? Hold on, let me power it down and power it up again. The power line is kind of iffy. It should auto-connect it. Did I fry it? Now! It's fine. Everything, everything's fine. I'd be so mad if I fried it. Oh, you know why? There's no... Oh, no, there is ground on that, in that section. It should be... To be connected. Weird. Yeah, see, there it is. Oh, look at that. It's the it's the wires. The wires are being dumb. Yeah, that part of the breadboard wasn't uh, connecting quite properly. No, I'm going to keep it in a low battery state. Keep it on its toes. Yeah, there it is. And if I do... Any additional? Yeah, see, that, that registered as a button. Okay, all right. So we've got it all hooked up and running. Um, I Just in, in the interest of not getting into it for too long today, I have a lot of viewers right now, and it pains me to, do, to, to end at 5. But I'm going to end at 5 because we need to get into it deeper. Now, the next stream we have... I think we're going to be getting into it deeper because I'm still waiting on parts for like the shifter and stuff. I need to get those bearings. And those say they get here Thursday. The night vision stuff that my buddy's sending me says it's going to get here on Thursday as well. Unless UPS or USPS or whatever suddenly discovers wormholes. Uh, I'm at the mercy of shipping. I hate that I spent all that money on parts for this shifter and when we got it together it sucked. Uh... Yeah, the shifter's from Thingiverse. This is the second one, the other design, the Open Sim Project one, uh, that I think is going to be a lot better. I think it's going to be a lot cooler, uh, and it's it's a little bit more, you know, packaged. But, like, the, the whole point of my getting the wireless wheel thing today is so that I have those extra buttons. I now have 28 more buttons available to me in CPU Cube, and I could either MacGyver it together like this, or what I'd like to do, get behind this protocol and figure out how... Uh, the button presses are going to be communicated. And hey, maybe, maybe, maybe there's room in the packets for extra buttons. I'm hoping there is. I don't know if there is or not, but we've got 128 buttons represented at the bottom of the screen. And we have no API that tells us how to get into them. All it did was tack 28 buttons onto the end here, right? So I'm hoping that we can get every single button to the steering wheel represented. Or consider just sending them mail. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, granted, granted devices, but then we couldn't hack it, you know. And uh, I, uh, we had a staff member in chat at some point when we were working on the wheel, and they were saying they they've been meaning to release the protocol. Now well, that doesn't really do anything for me, right? It doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. I spent a bunch of money on uh, on the modules. And we're going to put them to use. So I'm going to power this down. And I think on Thursday we'll come back and we'll, we'll fully utilize our hookup here. Well, the, the only way, the, the best way to hack it is to take the pins down here and to observe them and figure out what's going on. I may have to make an Arduino that's going to listen in on their phone call and interpret the packets in a particular way. The Linbus chip is heating up. Damn. Or no, that's the power supply. This is the this is a very high power. No, no, this is a very high power supply. What is this one? Oh yeah, two different power supplies. That's right. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of weird stuff on this wheel. Doing a lot of weird stuff. Got to make a lot of different power. All right, 
Well, that's me for today. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. One of them is a, a high power 12 volt supply because we actually need to make the power that's going to power Linbus uh, and, and give all the peripherals life because a uh, Linbus is supposed to power the devices that are that are far away. So you had to make 12 volts and I had to make enough 12 volts. So I had to get a big regulator. No, I only had to get a big regulator because the um, tw uh, 50 or whatever, whatever giant power supply I've got sitting in here um, was over the specifications of all of the other regulators at Palolo. I had to buy the big, the big, the big super duper one because it went up to that higher voltage. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff on this, this setup, uh, but it works. It works and we're going to get it more functional. We're going to get into serial decoding on Thursday's stream, depending on whether or not, if I, if I suddenly like get parts fall in my lap suddenly, uh, we'll do one of those other projects, but but ones and zeros, I think we're in for on Thursday. We'll observe it on the scope. We'll see what's there, and then I'll know what I need in order to configure an Arduino to listen in on the serial that's coming in. Now there are other. I mean, maybe I could use something like Wireshark or something like that. Like w there are serial listening uh, things. So maybe maybe I could actually. Maybe I could actually get one of those that'll like organize all of the um, stuff coming in. This this is my microscope. That's my microscope. It's a webcam, but it's it has a C mount on it. There's a there's a scope command that you can use in order to, to see what all the stuff is. I actually did order stuff from Kurokesu, and I I haven't gotten a shipping confirmation yet. I'm hope hopefully the hopefully he's still alive, you know. Hopefully all these conflicts aren't in the way. Cheapo logic analyzer off of Amazon? No, we don't need that. You got Arduinos sitting right here. I can just make one. I don't need a logic analyzer. I need a packet sniffer and a program that's going to organize the packet types and the data in it. So I think it's easier for me to just do ones and zeros uh, with a serial print from an Arduino. That's that's what I'm thinking of. Um, unless Unless there's some super duper... Also, if I have to order something on Amazon, I gotta wait for it. <laughs> you don't have time to wait for that kind of stuff. No, um, I, the easiest way for me to do it is just going to be to spit out ones and zeros, and then I can copy and paste them into something. We can see if there are different types of packets or whatever, and then we can also start with a scope and see what kind of protocol is going on. Because I have a feeling, I have a feeling there's gonna be a little handshake at the beginning, and then we're gonna need. It's just gonna have normal packets. I'm hoping. I'm hoping all that stuff is in one big packet that just goes back and forth, but we'll see. Uh, all right, so that's it for me. That's it for me. I don't know. I don't know. What, are, what else is going on? Davies is streaming. Uh, Adam is editing. Mato's doing stuff. You guys figure out where you want to go. You probably already have those streams open if you want to go to them. I am going to close the doors on my stream right now, and we will be back on Thursday. Until then, I will be in... Ah, damn it. Until then, I will be in Discord, as evidenced by this giant comment that has all our stuff in it. Um, yeah, uh, maybe maybe I'll tweet something next month. But, <laughs> got him. All right, all right, all right. Well, you guys take care, and I'll see you on Discord if I see you. Uh, back on Thursday. I gotta wait, because there's, like, a delay, so that everybody, so it doesn't cut me off mid-sentence. You know, because otherwise it'll, 